Show us, Matt. What the heck? Okay, he's already... Let's start over. Cut. You're, he's already you're breaking the off. rules. Me too. You're breaking the rules, Matt. I make my own rules. <laughs> yes. All right. Cheers, everybody. Well, Cheers. 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 Nice. Delicious. Good. Yum. <clears throat> so uh, tonight, in Matt's honor, I'm drinking Ripe in the Machine. This is a collaboration between Great Notion and Parish Brewing, oh, wow. uh, two of the team's favorite breweries. And uh, there's a double IPA, 8.5%. And this one has Citra, Nelson, Simcoe, and nectar on hops and it also has phantasm which is uh like pulverized freeze-dried uh grape skins so gives it like a nice uh tropical you know grape white like kind of like white wine white white wine flavor huh. that's uh, pretty cool. that's like we a actually... backpacker special it's been freeze-dried mm -hmm. <laughs> yes and uh bellino and bowman and i drank this one a couple years ago um when great notion brewed it this one's brewed by parish but uh when we were backpacking in escalante so this that's one's nostalgic nice. for me that's right that's a great trip that's part yeah, of the that stack awesome. forgot oh. to throw these on nice damn i didn't i didn't bring any of those well this it is 420 the... today so i was gonna say that's an appropriate shirt for today yeah Nice. Those are fantastic. Yeah. I uh, took some mushrooms a while ago. They, I should start peeking once we get to the photos. <laughs> yes. Is that basically the mastery behind all of your photos, Eric, is you pop some shrooms? Psychedelics? Yeah. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give away my secrets, but... <laughs> Keeping it on the down low. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did a whole podcast episode about about this with Alberto. I, not a whole episode. It was like two <laughs> minutes. True, but it was a fun little chat. <laughs> yeah, but it was yes. real fun. Paul, what are you drinking? Yeah. What are you doing over there? You look distracted. Well, well, I was I was trying to find the profile of what I'm drinking. Um, I had something else in mind. I think I'll hit that one second. When I saw what uh, that gunslinger Jennifer was starting off with, I had to uh, up my game a little bit. So I went a little deeper in the vault and uh, pulled <laughs> out a uh, Brujos uh, Shadow Existence. Wow. Uh, nice. This one's, this one's fantastic. It's a, a collab with uh, Black Goat Brewing. And I uh, picked this one up a couple of weeks ago. I think you have some of this too, Eric. Have you had it yet? I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard good things. So I'm really excited. I was letting it get closer to like a month old because I have a lot it's, of other stuff. It's it's so good. It's so smooth. Yeah, I, I wish I could have gotten a few more of these, but uh, I think I have a couple left and uh, figured I'd do one here on the show tonight. So, yeah, this one's really great. What style of beer is it? It's a triple hazy. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's super good. Uh, 10%. I think... Uh, I think Jennifer's is like 15% or something. I got as close <laughs> as I could. Actually, it's only 10. My bad eyes told me. I thought it said 10.7, but it's actually a 10. So. Yes. I was going to throw some whiskey in mine just to up my game, but uh, I don't want to kill the flavor. Yeah, no, and, for sure. And I need to stay upright for a couple more hours. So Yeah. there's that as well. You can I lay down if you need to. You can just like go back and lay down on the couch during yeah. the episode if you need to we'll probably hear you from there <laughs> i might do that i might do that it's gonna be that that kind of episode oh yeah <laughs> we're just getting started jennifer I'm not ready for this matt yes what is it so it is a it's called toucan touch this cute can art um it's an imperial imperial sour ale it's from um el Dorado street and it is, it has coconut, orange, pineapple, and a dash of nutmeg. And it's probably like my favorite beer right now. It's so oh, wow. good. 
like so good to the point since we obviously got this a few weeks ago when we were in Southern California that I actually floated the idea to David a few days ago because I'm working on a project of images and I may not have quite enough and they were from that area and I was like what if we just go back for three days like fly there what if I buy like a pelican case and we can bring all this beer back with us on the plane I oh think I learned God. that from Jimmy Geka so that's a shout out to Jimmy because he does that and David you belong on the cast now see yeah I mean I'm thinking about this so yeah you just, just you just you just solidified your membership. Alcoholism. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's all you She's think about, you know, different ways to sneak it in, sneak it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm to that point. So, yeah. But, no, it's it's very good. It's 10%. Yeah, well, you definitely need more images. Yeah. Gallery's Bennett, not quite ready. Bennett keistered a six-pack a six pack once. But we'll talk about that next li- <laughs> later on tonight. <laughs> Pelican support, case is a, is a good you. call. Cause I uh, I've never. had, I had a can break in like a backpacking backpack with all my stuff in it oh. on a flight back home one time. Yeah. Smelled like maple. It still smells like maple syrup today. Oh, when I, come <laughs> <in my backpack. laughs> I put him in my shoes. I just, yeah, I'll, I'll take, I haven't had another one break since then. I've, I've been more careful. Nice. It's just sad. Like, yeah, we're almost, and David's got a few favorites too that he's almost out of. So yeah. I wish they we should. can always uh, give some assistance if you want some New York area stuff or uh, Great Notion. Oh yeah, always like Great Notion, David. I think that's what he's drinking right now across the wall in solidarity. Yeah, he said yeah. he sent me a photo the other day that he that he found some stuff in a bottle shop there, and one of them is Great Notion. I think it's blueberry muffin. It, well, yeah, and it mm. was it was tasty. It was yeah. Good. Hey, sixteen beers and a large flat rate box is twenty two dollars to your doorstep. Cheaper Done. than checking a bag. Done. Literally, out. We'll uh, we'll work on that one. Yeah, because they just and they just dropped um, this week a bunch of heaters. So it'd be a good time to uh, fill a box and get down to you too. You'd love it. And, may, uh, may save you a plane ticket. Yeah. No. David David likes IPAs too, so you could throw some brujos in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I like their. Um, what was that one you got me, Bolino? And we went to the Redwoods. It was like. Banana, double stack banana or great stout. Notion. It was like oh, that, was, that was breakfast of leisure with banana. Oh, oh breakfast dude. of leisure. Ooh. That is so good. Really good. That sounds Ooh. really good. That is so good. I have some normal breakfast of leisure in my fridge right now. We stocked up on that one a couple months ago because it doesn't come around a lot, and that's one of my favorites. Got a that case of it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I just had one of those yeah. last night. Man, they're so good. Mm. It's the best when you're camping, like right next to the campfire. That's what I've been oh, saving yeah. for. Yep. Blaino, what are you sipping on? So I've been um, I've been, I was sick for a long time, so my my taste is not up to speed. So I'm kind of going more of a Rattler route today. So Rattlers are basically a low ABV malt liquor. It's like 2.5 percent with grape juice added to it, or grapefruit juice, not grape juice, and so. A lot of flavor. It's pretty easy for me to taste it, but I'm also not drinking a really good beer, but not being able to actually totally enjoy it. So for today, I'm kind of being a lightweight, 2.5, but it's actually it's nice. I like it. Okay, how do you how do you kick somebody out of one of these meetings? Where do I? <laughs> yeah, so I malt guy? liquor. I want to expand <laughs> the repertoire or the the palette of taste for. Oh, he's he's taking the show to new levels. Oh. Come on, malt liquor. I know he's trying to like take it down a whole different route now. He's not even yeah. part of the cast, and he's like trying to put his mark on it. I've been drinking some coffee today. It's yes. good that I like it. Well, do you Matt, really like thank... it though? Do you really like it? I do. Okay. I can taste it. I want to make sure I can you taste weren't... it. I like it. That's the thing. It doesn't look so too bad. It. Kind of looks no, like a hazy good. IPA. Yeah. I was... I was gonna make fun of you, Bellino, but I really have no, no room to talk. So, was, so, so <laughs> Matt, that's something I was hoping days. we could bring up, Matt. Like at uh, when we've gone camping together, like we usually always save a bunch of beers to share with each other and have like a big can share. So we'll each get like a little taster of each one, and the beers that Matt has contributed have been beyond questionable. Like, <laughs> so here's an example. Uh, in Colorado, there are like twenty of us there. I think we ended up drinking like. 
25 beers that night. There weren't even 20 of us. There were, what, like 10 of us maybe? Not not that big of a group. Uh, one of Matt's contributions was a guava sour with coffee. What? <laughs> dude! That's, dude! <laughs> Is that a home job? <laughs> <laughs> like, who, who, who has ever ordered a coffee and been like, oh, let me just get some guava juice real quick and mix these two together? I don't think I would have ever bought that. That is but, super random. He's lying. That's exactly. That is... <laughs> We're all making fun of him, giving him shit for it. But to his credit, I tried it, and it actually wasn't wasn't bad. <laughs> it kind of worked. Yo. I like to ex- experiment with my beer yeah. choices sometimes. Well, not anymore. So you stop drinking now. Yeah, so I'm drinking ginger yeah, beer. See. Ginger okay. beer. Oh, nice. Nice. That's it's, good. It's actually. Yeah, I really guess you could have drank root beer or something. It's refreshing. It's, it's definitely Tasty. refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, so I challenged so, myself to not have any alcohol for a year. When did this start? Uh, in February. Okay. Because when I uh, first started doing the show, I was like, oh, man, we got to get Matt on. Like, he'll be crushing beers. He'll be the perfect guest. And now we finally have you on, and you don't even drink anymore. So I, know. I don't really are know how kick, this is going to go. Are you going to kick me out? <laughs> was this the February of a certain night in Death Valley? Uh, yeah, no. was that the catalyst? <laughs> Same trip, though. Uh, I haven't had anything to drink since the last night of that trip. Mm. And that's why. Was that the night of the, the epic binger? No. I had like two beers. Eating Actually, Mountain style? I mean, there's a whole story if you want to hear it. I mean, it might be. Seems boring. like Jennifer wants to. Well, I don't. We might be talking about two separate times. Oh, no. That was. That was a whole other thing. That was. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, was... Jennifer's like, let's rewind and go with that one. <laughs> that was... Let's take it back a couple of days. Throw that heart music in there. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. exactly. See. <laughs> I was brought on to heckle, music. so I am just doing my job. That's that my was... daughter for those that watching was... this. That was 2021. Yeah, with Kane. Or Kane Always. was there. Yeah. So Matt. When we were just in Death Valley in February, did you have a beer at, yeah. at night? Okay, yeah. so this is like a brand new challenge. Because I know like last year before your backpacking, your Colorado trail trip, you didn't just stop or cut back dramatically. Yeah, well, I they couldn't pack prepared. the beer with them. It was three months, right? Yeah, I, so to wean I stopped off. drinking for two months before I started the hike. Mm-hmm. Um, That's good. While I was training. And yeah, then, you're looking lean, dude. Thank you. Yeah, you look good. Yeah, no, I try. I um, so I hair stalls and grown back. <laughs> fuck you. I got. <laughs> I kind of got inspired on like a lot my my last last Death Valley trip. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Shane McDermott, but mm-hmm. he is. Uh, he hasn't been. He hasn't drank alcohol for a very very long time, and he's sixty years old, and he's like in three times as good a shape as all of us combined. And, you know, he eats really healthy, really clean. He works out like a machine almost every day, doesn't drink alcohol. And so I've been doing the same thing. I've been eating really good. I've been working out almost every day. I've been doing a lot of strength training and I've eliminated alcohol. So I'm just, and then that was combined with um, like about a month and a half ago, my dad found out that like his heart's failing mostly because of alcohol intake like he's developed his basically the muscles are just getting weak and weak weaker he's never had liver problems his liver is fine but his heart is going out because of the alcohol Hmm. apparently Hmm. it's pretty common and so Hmm. you know like just seeing him go through that at you know he's like 73 or something so it's like i don't want to be that way so anyway i just i'm on this whole new path right now (laughs) Good for you. Good man. for you. Yeah. That's, That's great. Awesome. Do you feel like, me- how about mentally? How do you feel? Do you feel more clear in the are morning? Are you miserable? Or <laughs> are you depressed? <laughs> Just like thirsty? Work. Barely keeping it together, <laughs> flying off the rail. I was dehydrated until, until this, ep- this little podcast here. I was good. Got anxious? This. No. <laughs> Just, 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I've been feeling great. Guys, hold up, hold up. It's 4.20 p.m. right now. <laughs> hold on. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> it is. Here we go. Or is he going? <laughs> He's going to get that massive bong. He's just going to do bong rip. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes oh. <laughs> yes oh, all right wow. nice turn the fan on dude <laughs> yeah i know i don't have any turn windows down here yeah, cover that up. put some incense on <clears throat> where do uh where do just put a kibosh on the the whole healthy lifestyle thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> whatever we man. You know you're hey. on something right now. he's like we got a segue real quick yeah <laughs> Now back to our sponsor. <laughs> Matt lives in Colorado where things are like decriminalized and stuff. Who knows what he's doing right now? He can do literally doing anything. anything. I'm doing nothing. Sam and Paul and Belano in Oregon. We're doing it all. Sniffing yeah. glue. Bone shrooms. <laughs> Everything's legal. Well, actually, they just made everything yeah. illegal again. Paint again? Chips. Well, like basically you have personal amounts of any drug you want and, and it's legal here. But I think they just made it illegal again. So Surprise. Oh. Damn. Going to yeah. jail. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the jails were getting a little bit lean. Yeah. So but, uh, we needed an uptick. That's convenient. <laughs> Just change the laws whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah. No vacancy yeah. again. So <laughs> got it wrong. So, Matt, what's funny is uh, you were the first person to ever interview me, like on a podcast. And so now the tables have turned That's and right. we're all interviewing you. Oh, this is an interview? Damn. Well, more like an intervention with you, about yes. your photography. Oh, I can use that. I think Matt was like <laughs> the first one to interview me too. And he interviewed me like a week Probably after the only one. starting out on my <laughs> photography journey. Like, really? He got me like we? right out the door. Wow. Yeah, it was very good. Was, I think it was like 2018 for me. What guess was that? Like number four or five? I was like what? super early. Before yeah, me, were, yeah, right. Yeah, Bolino was. That's oh, kind of yeah, that's kind of a yeah, flex, yeah. Bolino. I love it. I was like thirty-four, I think. <laughs> I was in the thirties. Who are you? I don't remember. I did it with David. But back then, like five people listened, so there's no that's... advantage to being early. Now there's six. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now there's eight, and I've four of them are here. No, his podcast, uh, I mean, Matt Sears, that podcast has been such an amazing thing and how long it's lasted and how many incredible guests you've had. Oh, in fact, sure. Art Wolf, like I've been trying to okay. find time to watch or listen to your Art Wolf episode because obviously he was a hero of mine early on, still is. And he's such an amazing all around photographer, but I'm so, um, I'm chomping at the bit to kind of listen to that episode. But beyond that, like that, your your whole podcast has been such a value to the Mm -hmm. like honestly as a friend and as someone who's seen it and been really impressed by it and proud of you like it's been such a value to our community and it's definitely brought a lot of work from people who I wasn't aware of uh, made me aware of their work and it's just been great so thanks for all the work you put into it I mean seriously it's been um, you just put so much work into it and I, I think it's it's been great so thanks man that's yeah. my spiel that was sentimental Belino's never said that anything nice. like that to me. Never. Never to anyone, really. Just heavy. me. <laughs> oh, no. I love it. What What episode are you on, Matt? For the uh, viewers. Man. I've recorded? I have to look it up. I feel I like already... it's kind of become like the podcast, right? Like, is there a bigger nature photography podcast? I mean, a lot of other what? ones have popped up. I mean... I, right after Bruise and Views, it's like, right. The it's number podcast. two, I think. We we quickly yeah. took the, you know stole the throne, the crown. Sure. But uh, yeah. No, I've already re I've already recorded episode three eighty three. Oh my gosh! Wow, and that's cool. Produced. Can I be episode four twenty? <laughs> I can do that <laughs> if you really want, buddy. Let's do it. That's He's a ready. good idea, right there. We'll just turn. We'll do a right Bruise and Views episode. We'll we'll do F stop collaboration. In collaboration with Bruise and Views for 420. Collab X collab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's a and, good call. And by the way, uh, thank you, Jennifer and Michael, for joining tonight, filling in for 
Mike Dimiola and Jimmy who just didn't want to be here. They had, they wanted nothing to do with Matt and his political views and <laughs> they didn't want to get sucked into that shit and just argue for hours and hours. So it's weird. We told them, we told them it'd be okay. We'd, we'd skirt around their uh, feelings and uh, their, posi <laughs> their position and uh, they just wouldn't have it. So uh, mm -mm. yeah, happy to be here. Them a, okay. Then we can get them for 420. We're representing the West side. That's right. right. That's true. That's right. Yes. It's all mountain time and yeah. Pacific time. No, no ET over here. Yeah. Get them out of here. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes those bastards are on to like midnight. They're absolute savages. Wow. I'm like, Hey dude, don't, don't you have to, it. don't you have to work tomorrow? It's like one o'clock in the morning and they're just still pounding them. <laughs> like Jimmy, animals. Jimmy's, Jimmy's <laughs> like, uh, Jimmy's a school teacher. He's like Jack Black in school of rock. Like, <laughs> Yes. Hangover. yes well it's too bad because i was actually looking forward to chatting with with those two guys but maybe we'll do another one sometime down the road we'll see if we can convince them and it's pretty tough yeah they're good dudes they're great but mm -hmm. uh yeah they've both they've both been on my podcast as well, well let's get right into this oh, oh shit Felino. what is uh Damn. what's going on here What's this position? I'm just this admiring that you've taken? nature, bro. I know where that is. Is I'm this what actually, you do on top of every 14er in Colorado? I'm actually just flying a drone right there, I think. I think you are. Uh, yeah. That's what they call it. I think you're it, marking nowadays. your territory. Just flying the old drone. <laughs> just flying the old drone around. It is the stand. Taking the old drone for a spin. Yeah, he's like, this bitch is mine. That was an, right that was an awesome trip. We got yeah, was... rained on by lightning bolts for like hours it was like that was the most intense lightning storm i've ever been in my life me neither mm. and so that story is still one of my favorite stories to tell about you matt so real fast like what year was this this is 2021 mm, and colorado is kind of like a blank spot in my map especially southwest this is my first time really being in southwest colorado and so of course i saw matt i saw sarah but matt and his son and my family all went camping for two nights. And I think the second night or the first night, I think the first night they're calling for like some thunderstorms, but it was like the lowest chance of the week. And it just unloaded right around dark. And Matt was like cooking his dinner. He's got his like truck. He's got the awning out. He's like cooking his dinner on the back of his truck. And it's just like pounding rain and it's thunder and lightning. And my family and I get into our tent and we're just like huddled around, like scared out of our wits. And like after like 20 or 30 minutes, it was just kept on just, I mean, it was lightning strikes every 15 seconds, 20 seconds. It was so intense. And after like 20 minutes, I was like thinking, I got to go check on Matt. And I <laughs> picked my head out the tent and Matt's still cooking away. And I'm like, Matt, are you okay? And he's just so nonchalant. Just like, I'm good. And I, I was like, so impressed. Like, this guy is such a mountain guy that this, this massive electrical storm happening. He's just like chill as a cucumber, just cooking away no problem because i swear we were gonna get electrocuted that night i was i, was, I really thought it was gonna be a bad <laughs> were, you were you guys cooking? camped up here yeah yeah not on top of the mountain but in that little basin below, right in that little where the yeah. Lakes are. yeah mm -hmm. such a beautiful area oh that's one of my favorites yeah so matt great trip again it was <laughs> honestly i was like <clears throat> terrified <laughs> <laughs> You, you play well, there's also like nothing you can do in those situations like you just got to sit it out like mm -hmm. i've been in uh yeah crazy thunderstorms in the rockies like in in mountain basins where it's just like there's nowhere i can get to everything's like the same elevation and there's no trees anywhere like i just have to pray yeah i think the next day we realized there's no trees which looked like they've been struck by lightning or in that basin so we feel like it was probably fairly safe where we were but um, still, well, there's no thunderstorms so in Oregon, a, so I'm not used to that sort of weather. There's another little story to that, too, because that same day, uh, Jason Hatfield happened to roll by us because he was filming some drone footage for, I don't know, some movie trailer or something. I think it's for that program <laughs> that just got released on Netflix, I think, on Wednesday. It's some sort of like kind of nature series. It's on Netflix. Well, cool. He's working on. Yeah. But wow. yeah, I mean, so I have this like giant aluminum rooftop tent on my truck and i was like yeah i'm gonna be up in this rooftop tent um i think i'll be fine because you know it's a faraday cage and he was like well actually and he like knows everything about faraday cages and he was like 
No, actually, only the inside of your vehicle is a Faraday cage. If you're up in that rooftop tent, you're going to die. It's like a conductor. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, cool, that's <laughs> awesome. Thanks, bro. <laughs> you're on top of the, the car. It's a lightning rod. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to die. That's sweet. Thank you for the... That's when a, a tall center column comes in handy. <laughs> Lay on the ground and extend that bitch all the way up. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, we'll let you get away with this one, but at this one, there's no. <laughs> oh shit! Wow. There's no retracting oh, this. Come on, <laughs> Looney nature. That's you know. I gotta, mark, I gotta mark my territory for the influencers. <laughs> <laughs> there are no yes. leaves there, so yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I wanted the the ground to get you know a little saturated. Get that reflected like the, light. And there's <laughs> good drain. Looks like good drainage. Exactly. For sure. Yeah, there's a solid flow. Because even from this distance, you can see the arcing stream. You can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got you got some distance there. Thank, thank you, Bellino. You're, you're, a, you're welcome, man. You're a true hero. I wouldn't do so that. That, <laughs> that spot that, like, everyone likes to walk out to and take, like, influencer-style <laughs> photos, which that's is what it. Matt is doing here. Um, <laughs> that's, like, super sketchy. Like, I hate when people do that because I'm just like, that's so pointless. And, like, everybody's done that. You're not doing anything new, and you're just risking yeah. your life. But yeah. somebody, if, not off that part, but somebody fell, like, uh, a few months ago and died yeah. off a different yeah. part. Like, the ground crumbled I and saw they, that. it gave way and they fell down. That's sad. It is, but I'm worried that if more stuff like that happens, they'll put, like, a fence at this spot, which would absolutely blow. Yeah. That's what I thought, too, when I saw that story. I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah, like horseshoe mm -hmm. bend or something. I'm well, honestly surprised it doesn't happen more often with as many people that are going on. I know. There. That's the first time I've heard of it. How do you guys feel about that policy? Because I personally am of the belief that when you're in the outdoors, there's inherent risks involved, and you should it's be It's your responsibility. Prepared. Yeah. And so I don't need the government to put up a fence to protect me from what's outside. I agree. Agreed. It only yeah, took Matt totally 30 minutes to get into talking about the government. So here we are, guys. <laughs> we I mean, I'm very politically liberal, but like this is one of those issues that bothers the heck out of me. Like, yeah. I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you're outside, like, it's it's unsafe. So you, sometimes yeah. you might die. And that's just, just how it is. Yeah. Just wear a helmet. And that's just what makes it special. Helmet. Yeah. The, the fact that you have to be self-reliant and, you know, there's a certain yeah. sense of satisfaction that I get from surviving trips. It's like yeah. they tell you on the Zion shuttle, your safety is your responsibility. <laughs> right. yes. we, don't need, we don't need a fence around everything no. that people no. might fall off of, you know? No. I can yeah. see like a sign, just signage saying people have died and maybe like even listing the dates of people when they've died or whatever might be or fallen. Um, I don't know. Just they to have really that... let it sink in, just educate because people are so unaware. Like part of the issue is that people are just not aware of inherent risks in the outdoors they just think it's rock or something so i think it's stable but so i think anybody that is next to a tall drop knows that if they fall off nothing good will happen yeah you would but there's like crumbly rock and then there's like solid granite rock and it's definitely yeah even worse in terms of like your risk assessment yeah mm -hmm. yeah i don't know but critical so. thinking kind of lacks though unfortunately <laughs> yeah hey oh Bad. shit old school Old yeah, this back. looks like an old ass photo. That's a uh, let's see, that's at um, Horse Brass. Yes, this is such a good spot. Still, Horse Brass Tavern Horse in Portland. Brass. Yeah, such a so good who, spot. So who's the who's the dude with the cargo shorts on the left and then the ginger on the right? I don't recognize that's, those guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> Brian Kibbins. That's Kibby. He's a, a fucking legend, 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 dude. Appearance. On the Kibbe's left. A ginger? No, oh, on the left. On the that left. look, okay, that's that was my guess. That looks like a kibby. Yeah, he's, he's a, a fucking legend. And the guy on the right's Jeremy Cram. <clears throat> yeah. And the guy oh, that's the Cram. Oh, he used to have a yeah. beard. And the yeah. guy in the very yeah. back is Scott Miller. Yeah, I guess that and is Cram. Yeah, I've, I've met Scott Miller. And the guy next to uh, Cram is Bellino's younger brother. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he's like twenty three there. I definitely <laughs> aged for sure. My God. dude, look at you, it's Esteban, Esteban Bellino. That's right. Holy shit, dude. You're a good looking man. Uh, Matt, we're, we're, uh, we have some plans in the works to get Kibby on the show. So if you want to join for that episode, you can probably cancel the workshop or something. Oh, it's worth it. I mean, we have so many things to roast his ass about. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> well, 
Yes. The behind the scenes images of that show are going to be, I mean, just that'll be the whole show. Cool. The whole show. Oh. Be the showcase. Yeah. Just, I've got a, I've, I've got an easy three, 400 shots of him doing some, some crazy shit. I mean, we would it'd just be a, just don't say a word. Just keep yeah, going. Yeah, just scroll through them. <laughs> like this. He is the crazy, one of the craziest dudes I've ever met in my life. <laughs> look He's at him. Crazy. Look at him in this picture. He looks like a <laughs> goblin. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also like he'll give you the I'm shirt off his back. looks like he's about to do something he'll give you the shirt off his back like he's one yeah. of those guys yeah. like he'll do anything for you yeah he would he totally yeah. would he's a great yeah, he's guy. a good dude he's a good dude it was just his birthday a couple days ago actually oh there we go this is precarious. oh shit Look i was at just me impressed protecting by the protecting uh... the mud right yeah well good that's job, what i was gonna man. say I, I bet bellino was looking at you like you better not ruin this stuff you better not fall in you bastard absolutely nature first right here good job <laughs> right. yeah <laughs> conservation i finally edited those photos bellino they're pretty awesome <laughs> from this from this spot <laughs> this day that day yeah there was some good stuff i'm, I'm like two-thirds of the way through editing my images from the trip but yeah, at this point why even use a tripod you're basically shooting handheld with your hands you man grabbing that thing uh because i couldn't lean over like that without a tripod <laughs> you could just i i guess maybe you couldn't see the yeah you gotta be able LCD to compose the but I bet, if the I bet if you could... lcd tilts so on this trip i didn't have my a7r5 i only had my a7r4 because my Ooh. five was getting repaired and so you know he only had his a7r4 the... what a handicap <laughs> well it is though like the, the i have a three thing. The tilt screen on the five is incredible. The matte paint 2.0 would be planking over those tiles and just getting shit done with one hand. That's what's going to happen next year. Exactly. <laughs> I want to see that. Yeah, I'd just be like, hey, most of you need a tripod. Step back. <laughs> just, use, just use me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do your laundry on my abs when you're done. <laughs> was this this year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like in February. Yeah, there was some good mud, for sure. Those are great. Those are fantastic. That was a nice yeah, thing. they got nice, nice uh, depth to them. The way they're curling up and they're clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a well. That's because he he brushed them for like two hours, removing all the little out there with because he's he's natural landscape photographer uh, award whatever you know he's one of the founders. So like he's not gonna clone anything out. Right, you gotta, you gotta clean it all up by hand. Exactly. I may or may not have used brushes before in my mud tile. <laughs> but have you ever peed on your mud tile? To no, I can I can say that for sure. I have never peed on. <laughs> <laughs> Got some confessions going on here. Well, I go. I haven't either. I was just wondering. Oh, uh, whatever. We have a photo of you doing it. I can go back to that. I'm That's good. like I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Matt broke the rules and shared way more photos than he's supposed to. So we need to get through these. Sorry. Um, Jeez. And then he oh shared three from the same person, too, which has never been done before. So Whoa. sorry, man. This is crazy. That is a All crazy right. Image. Well, wow. It's like a peacock. I tried to share some images from people that I've discovered through Natural Landscape Photography Awards or through my podcast. <clears throat> and this particular photographer, Yuki uh, Kamishima, they submitted this um, in year two. And it was honestly the most ridiculous photo I think I've ever seen. And like top five for sure. But it was a controversial entry for NLPA because we weren't totally sure exactly what it was. So we asked the photographer, like, is this, what is this? Um, <laughs> and it's, it's just ice on like a, on the, on a window on a building. Oh, and yeah. so we were like, does that really count? <laughs> right. Does that. That's disrespectful. You guys should have minded your own business. Okay. <laughs> Probing questions and interrogating Yuki. Poor Yuki. Well, anyway, I, I was like, this is still like one of my favorite images that was submitted. So we ended up putting it in the year two book. Um, it's okay. just such an awesome photograph, even though it's not nature per se. Um, but it's a natural phenomenon. 
interacting with something that man made and man is a creation of nature so anyway whatever man creates is an extension of nature just like rules. a beaver dam or i mean if you really think about it yeah well you're a freak <laughs> so anyway i wanted to share three images from yuki because um one of the things that i um, appreciate about some, a lot of some photographers some of my favorite photographers are able to do both abstract images really well intimate scenes really well and grand landscapes really well all three i feel like mm, there's not very many people who can do all of them uh very well um not even eric bennett no, i'm just kidding <laughs> i feel I know like that's what I, you were alluding to anyway that's why i wanted to, that's why i picked three come on say from, it matt from yuki is because i feel like uh they do a really great job of doing all three of those genres um, in a way that's really unique and interesting. And plus, they're representing Japan. And I think that's super cool to see all these young upcoming Japanese photographers starting to get their name out there. So that was the first it's one. crazy. Yeah, the scene out there is incredible. And this this photo is nuts. And I love Yuki's work. We've shared an image from him before. Um, I think it was on Jimmy Tran's episode. But uh, and we talked about this one in Alex's episode because he, he also mentioned that when he was judging for the NLPA is one of those photos that he never forgot. It's just Reminds insane. me of my shirt. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super trippy. Yeah. It just makes you ask questions like what what in the hell am I looking at? You know, I love mm -hmm. photos like that. Where yeah. you just exactly. like you don't know what it is and you're just like it's beautiful and amazing and you, you don't I guess you don't really need to know but it just begs that question what is it exactly well i mean it forces you to look at the image much longer it's like yeah pulls you know, in it's like what, what the heck is that and that's the hallmark of a great abstract is to get the viewer asking those questions exactly mm -hmm. yeah. well if you know what it is it's not abstract i would say right. boom i so boom. you know that's a pet peeve of mine me too dude so somebody will post like a wildflower telephoto photo and like ooh, abstract and i'm like Nah, those are just flowers. They're it's literal. It's so intimate. It's a, not abstract. On Nature Photographers Network, there's an abstract category, and people post images there all the time that aren't abstract. It's like, no, I know what that is. It's David's very about obvious. to poke his head into the camera. <laughs> no, he's listening on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> he's got very, his ear against the door. It's very obvious what this image is. It's not abstract at all. Like that's right. the whole point in my mind. Yeah. Or yeah, you shouldn't be able to telephoto lens and they think just because they're using a telephoto lens on something it's abstract that's one right. of my peeves it's like no yeah or like oh and then it's on the long, same lines like grand landscape you can get a grand landscape with a telephoto you know yep. like it's it doesn't have to be wide angle and there can you can shoot intimate stuff with a wide angle like your yeah. mud crack thing that exactly. we just saw i think exactly. you had like a 24 on 20 to 70 yeah Boom. And I've done abstracts with a wide angle. So yeah, definitely not a limitation. Yeah, focal length isn't what defines it, really. This is crazy. It's not about the it length. reminds me of like oils too. It's like. Yes. It's or like, like, or like peacock feathers. Oh yeah, that was the first yes. time. Like, oh my gosh, first, I would name yeah. this thing. Like yes. Peacock. Yeah, that's what I first, when I first saw it. That's like something that came to mind. I was like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. but it's just it's ice. So wild. That's crazy. It's like frost, right? Yeah, yeah, with a macro lens, with a polar. There it is, the, the first voice crack. <clears throat> That's the thing, polarizer. So <laughs> like, a lot of people don't understand that you can get these colors, like, with ice from a polarizer. Like, I know there's some crazy physics lesson there that I don't know. But, yeah, that refraction, you can definitely get those rainbow colors. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You mm. would think that without a polarizer, you'd be able to see reflection stuff better. Polarizer yeah. just, like, enhances it. It's, mm -hmm. most it's, of my I guess if you're looking at like a rainbow, yeah, it makes it yeah. more vivid. It's science you wouldn't understand, Eric. Dude, <laughs> I know all about science. <laughs> I'll break it down for you right now. Hmm. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's nice. So and it is like a grand landscape, so a complete opposite from the same person. Yeah, and I just, I mean, the light on those mountains is amazing, but I love the balance of the composition yep. with the those crazy uh, frost blasted tree branches with the the mountain i mean it's simple but super clean the processing is really nice i mean to me it's to me it's like a perfect mountain scene so what would you rate this if it was in the nlpa 
Um, no. I would give it five is it stars. Out of, is it one out of? Is it is five the max? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was ten stars. Um, that's just like. Do you really want to go into this? Do you want I don't to... know. Is there really that much to it? Five stars or ten stars? Just say it. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's not. It's kind of master all the sleeves up. Yeah, it's actually not that simple to explain. That's why I'm asking. Well, if you really understand it, you'll be able to explain it simply. Okay, thank you. So basically, if you have five judges, and let's say that three judges gave it a five, two judges gave it a four, and one judge gave it a three, you basically have an average, right? And basically, what we do is we take that average score and we double it to make it scale to a 10 so that it's so that there's more differentiation in the numbers. That's the easy, simple. That's version. it. Yeah. I just, I can't grasp that. That's I know. That's why I was wondering hmm. Way over it's my multiplication. Head. So I'm like, I don't think Eric gets this. So I can do times one <laughs> times two though. That's, that's where you leave me. <laughs> oh man. Better put those glasses back on dude. Come on. <laughs> Come on, brother. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, this is a really good choice, Matt. What kind of what I noticed about this, which is kind of fascinating yeah. and interesting to me, is that you know it's definitely had this near far flow mm -hmm. to it. But instead of being kind of like bottom to top or diagonal, this is kind of like left to right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it uses color and of course uh you know tonality really well to kind of draw that eye left to right really well. So and just the yeah, the tree angling the in and the mountains angling. Yeah, like it's just kind of an unusual visual flow, but it works very, very well. At least for right. Me. And you have contrast in texture. You have contrast in light. You have contrast yeah. in color. You don't have epic clouds or anything like that. I think the amount of space they gave everything is perfect. I mean, to me, yeah. it's, it's, I wouldn't change anything if it was mine. Yeah. And it's not overdone. It's restrained. Like the processing is, right. is there, but it's definitely restrained and not, it's, he didn't go too far with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's yeah, gorgeous. I love those trees with the direction of the ice forming like toward this way. You can definitely tell which way the wind was blowing and it aligns with the lines in the mountains. Yeah, yeah I mean, it looks cold too. Yes, I've, for sure. I've spent a lot of time in the mountains and I've never seen something like that before. That's just, you have to have very specific like dew point and things like that. Yeah, we don't have that much humidity in the Rockies. That's a thing. Exactly. Yeah. We don't get like rime ice ever. Right. Yeah, I've only yeah, seen the maybe the Tetons. Style. Yeah, yeah, and also yeah, like Yellowstone England. with all the mist from the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This Ooh. one's sick too. That's so nice, yeah. Yuki like and Shohoshino and uh, what's the other guy's name that's been on here? Something like Nagaoshi. Uh, yeah, man, I wish I knew all their names, too. but uh, yeah, they all had incredible yeah, I... stuff from the same day, or it... I assume they were together. And I mean, so this is like the intimate selection, right? Like it's an intimate landscape, very simple. You know, you've got three trees and then you've got this contrasting blast of snow on the right, getting hit with light, great timing, capturing that scene. You know, there's a couple of minor imperfections, like with that little snow thing in the bottom left corner or whatever, but it's... Hey, we're not to here me, to like critique it's... photos, Matt. I don't know if I explain it well, to you, I'm but... just. Uh, you... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you give him the playbook, dude? I did. I thought I laid it all out very clearly. He didn't tell me anything. He, just he said, said he's seen the show before. <laughs> he said, show up drunk. And I was like, I, don't, I can't. <laughs> show up drunk and wear a jock strap because we're going to be hard. Dude. Throw in a mouthpiece. Yeah. And let's go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, I'm just acknowledging what other people might notice. That's all. Um, but to me, like the composition's awesome, the light's awesome, the subject selection is awesome. And so again, it's this photographer, uh, Yuki Kamishima, to me, they demonstrate that they have competence at all three of those genres of nature photography. And that's what I look for a lot in other people's work is like, show me what else you can do, you know, like, great, you can do Grand Scenics, that's awesome. What else can you do? Or if you're like a specialist and you can only do small scenes, can you do the grand scenic too? Like, and if you can't, that's fine. But to me, the people that can do all three of them, to me, that's just like, wow, I, I highly, highly admire and respect that. So I know. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Being that's a well-rounded photographer like that, just, yeah, you can literally work with anything. 
yeah, and then I also can. Your, your website is if you go if someone visits your website it's not just going to be the same general scene over and over and over again no matter how amazing each of those individual photographs may be it's going to be kind of feel a little bit more sterile but if there's a, a mixture of, of image types it's going to be much more engaging for sure mm -hmm. i do Absolutely. i do think there is something special about somebody like specializing in something as long as they're not restraining themselves like because then it's just a gimmick, you know? They're like, oh, like, I don't shoot grand landscapes, so I'm not even gonna, like, even if I see something cool, like, I'm gonna actively avoid it because I'm the intimate right. leaf <laughs> with piss on it guy, you know? So, like, that's uh -huh. just, that's just, like, a gimmick instead of, like, an actual style or something. But, I mean, I think it's great to experiment and stuff, but I also wouldn't, like, I don't think it'd be, like, wise advice to tell somebody, like, oh, like, you need to do all three things if they're just not naturally drawn to them or not seeing them anyways. Oh, I but, agree. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, I'm not trying to put anyone down. I'm just saying, like, right. I admire people who can do all three well. So, yeah. I mean, like, when I see a, a wide-angle scene or an intimate scene or something, like, it never has to do with, like, what I, what I have decided to shoot that day. It's just, like, scenes at all different scales catch my eye, and I'm just going to photograph them in the way that best suits them. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Yeah, um, it's not like a preference. I just I, I have zero preference for any style of composition or, or focal length or anything like that. It's whatever's available, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's important to be open minded and, and yeah, not confine yourself. I agree. 100%. Yeah. yeah, walk into it, whatever's available. Yep. And what's also interesting, like all three of these images, like they don't rely on super epic conditions. I mean, this, this is probably a clear sky day. Exactly. So, I mean, I think that's the other thing that I appreciate about photographers like this. They usually are able to leverage conditions and, and leverage all kinds of conditions, no matter what light is available, they're going to find a subject that can fit into that scenario. So I appreciate that as well. That's a great call. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's a really great call. Take, what, take what's available. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like I like the light on the right hand side. It really, for me, it's no dust. Kinda, yeah, it just kind of, it just evens out the scene. It's it's left heavy that evens it out and it adds an, another element to the uh, to the scene that makes it right. more um, appealing to me visually. I mean, if there was a fourth tree there, it would still be a, a great shot. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's three trees and then this blast of snow like that yep. just to me is, yep, that contrast is really cool. Totally yeah, agree. Natural light bleed is so cool. Yep. There's a name for that, like backlit snow sparkle dust stuff. I forget what it's called, but um, oh yeah, it's Kui called cocaine. Juan... <laughs> well, I it's so hard to pronounce her name, but uh, there's another oh, yeah, photographer yeah. we've had on the show, and she like kind of she has like tons of photographs of that stuff. Like she yeah. really loves it, and she got into yeah, it. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. and connecting back to the abstract, the first one he showed, like that snow, which is illuminated is, is asking i'm asking questions about like you know was it blown did it drop like like how did like again like good images allow us to, or force us to kind of ask questions and want to know more right which that's one way we can then hang on and look at the image and not just scroll on by it as well so right and yeah, I, don't, I, I don't ask mean... a lot of questions when i look at matt's images i'm like the fuck is this? Why did he shoot this? What the hell is he thinking? Uh, I do the same thing. <laughs> Why is he marking his territory again? <laughs> well, I have this. I have this reputation on the disc, the landscape photographer world by Discord channel for like bashing on wide angle grand scenic photos, and I I actually really like that kind of photography. Still, I do plenty of it myself, but I will say that. Um, as a viewer and a consumer of photography, it's harder to be surprised by um, grand scenic images for me. Anyway, it's just like it's it's less. It just does. You don't have the same questions. It's like, oh, that's a pretty sick scene. Awesome light, beautiful stuff. But yeah. it doesn't evoke those other kind of mysterious qualities <clears throat> that you would get out of more small scenes or abstract scenes. So I think. Have I you think ever? gone into a debate with Alex Nalen because he yeah, he likes to think that wide angle scenes are like more personal, more artistic and intimate stuff and patterns and things are like on the nose and like less personal and less expressive. Oh. It's like the exact opposite of what I think. <laughs> Jennifer's dying. 
I don't know. <laughs> I think I have to lose myself for a second. <laughs> second, I need to crack another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just start Alex, chugging. Alex and I have had lots of conversations about that because um, he's one of the co-founders of NLPA. And, right. I mean, I, I appreciate his perspective in that. Well, it's like, good to have balance by having opposing opinions, especially in, when it comes to a competition, you know, like you don't want it to all be leaning a certain way and then have other photographers get left in the dust, like not even be appreciated. For sure. I'm just expressing what my preferences are in terms of viewing images. Yeah. But we'll see. I don't even know. Maybe I have some other Grand Scenics in here. I can't even remember what I put in anymore. <laughs> I've slept since then. <laughs> yeah. See, Ooh, this, this, is, is, this is sick. That is so nice. I mean, awesome, right? Grand, what, a, grand... what a killer black and white. Yeah. So I mean, kind what's of, interesting about this, this is like, just when I thought I had seen way too many photos of this arch, I never want to yes. see another one again. Um, I just realized that this is that that arch because this photo feels so different and unique from all the rest that I've seen. It feels super fresh. Yeah, exactly. I love seeing different takes, and this is definitely a different take. And I love this. Like, there's a spot that I like would never even go to because I'm just like, it's been shot to death. But then Brittany did something new here. Yeah, yeah. And I just recently had her on my podcast. Um, she's I really like her photography. Uh, she's she actually taught at the Ansel Adams um, Gallery for a couple of years, and um, again, she's looking for kind of a unique takes on popular scenes. I mean, she, all her work is in the Eastern Sierra or in the Yosemite Valley, with a little bit in Death Valley, but mostly, you know, very well trafficked, high high traffic areas that people have photographed already, and she's got a lot of really unique images from that place and i respect that a lot so yeah so, yeah this i'm gonna totally throw something down here so my biggest pet peeve in the landscape world or nature world is when someone says oh it's been done like this is a prime example of how no it has not all been done like Boom. this is a super iconic scene and mm -hmm. she has taken a completely different approach and it is beautiful so yeah yep so, absolutely that's a good comment yeah like absolutely. There are always opportunities there for those that are willing to look and think a little mm -hmm. outside the box. <clears throat> Matt, what's, what's one of your biggest pet peeves? I feel like you complain a lot. <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> Give us something. Come on, dude. Jeez, man. I have the viewers want to hear it. Well, I've been trying to I've been trying really hard to reframe my pet peeves as positives. Like instead of saying, Oh, I really hate it when people do this. I'm trying to reframe it to say like, I like it when people do this instead. So kind of along Jennifer's point, when it comes to iconic locations, iconic scenes, iconic compositions, instead of saying something like, I hate it when people take photos of iconic scenes and then pat themselves on the back for being super artistic. Like you don't really bring that much to the table to do that. So the alternative to that would be, I really like it when people visit an iconic location and have a unique take on it and breathe a little bit of fresh air into uh, that that scene in a way that maybe hasn't been done before. So I'm trying to be more positive, Eric. Jeez, and you're just dragging me down. I know. I feel like I did this at the wrong time. Like <clears throat> you're at this like midlife crisis turning point in your life where you're like, you're not drinking anymore. You're all positive now. Like dude we used to have such great vampire <laughs> chats like talking shit on everybody and just yeah need to hit him when he's loaded wasted. i know <laughs> too late well no actually that's we'll see good... in 13 months dude yeah i don't know if i even want to like meet up with this dude anymore to go shoot no that's interesting because um i found i found that when i was very active on social media and like making negative comments it's because i was drinking like I'm bored and I'm drinking and I'm on my phone and I'm like talking crap and like, that's just not good for anything. So anyway, that's where I'm at. That's cool. Trying to be better human being. Maybe someday. That's good. <laughs> so, good job, drunk. so I guess we're not doing our podcast then. Uh, Which one? So, <laughs> my, so every time Jennifer and I talk on the phone, they're like, Oh my God, can you believe what so-and-so did? Or, did you see that? Ah, ah, That's what I'm talking about. I want, I want to oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Here we go, Here we Jennifer, go. with some dirt. So What's my an wife, example? My wife Come like, on. My wife is like, you and Jennifer should create a podcast called 
Shooting the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting the shit. <laughs> uh, and my reputation is now done. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you you got a uh, you got a guest spot on our show locked in, so you're good. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> yeah, she'll be sometimes... the first phone call before Bellino now. Yeah, she's sometimes about, you, yeah. Sometimes you got to call it how you see it, right? Like if you see someone <laughs> doing something that's really not positive, you need to you know address it sometimes. L like what? What's an example? Give like names specific we want specific details like who's a photographer okay like... so this is definitely a pet peeve <laughs> that i have eric but it's and i've not been quiet about it my entire career as a photographer but one of my biggest pet peeves is when people do something to their photograph or let's take it a step further like they just generate okay. something in ai and then they put it out there and they just blatantly lie about what it is to everyone expecting yeah. people to just believe that what they captured is something they actually experienced. And, you know, I'm not anti Photoshop. I'm just pro honesty. And yeah, I just okay. can't stand it when people can't be honest with their audience about how something was created. Like, well, um, and also it's one thing to omit something and just post it without any kind of description or disclosure. But then when somebody like asks you a question and you just straight up lie in response, exactly. like that's pretty bad. That's, that's pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I talked at length about this. So my whole thing with that coming from like the workshop side of things is like when people not calling anyone out and I'll disclaimer that art is art. Like everyone can do whatever they want. Like I, I don't mind, but where I do mind is that I get these participants in my workshops that show up for a nice, beautiful photo of Mount Sneffels. And it's not the Matterhorn in real life. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they they literally come on my workshop and they're like, "No, that's not Mount Snuffles. Yeah, it is. No. Well, what about so and so? It's like the Matterhorn. Yeah, it doesn't look like that. Well, they didn't say they did anything. Well, that's brutal. Or they say they didn't. They actively said no. I. It's that's yep. how it looks. I mean, that's yeah. that's the. Same that's so thing. brutal. But it's and like then the encouraging people to come on your workshop and they see these photos but you're giving them a yeah. false sense of what's yeah. out there so it's yeah like... i mean i had this Dog. uh i had this false moment a couple of years ago i was photographing a very very classic scene in colorado in fall capitol peak and at sunset you can get just ridiculous bounce light on the west side of the peak and it just looks ridiculously awesome and ideally like the the ultimate would be to get like nice dark clouds above it and have those underlit with the red light. Like that would be the ultimate scene for me. I'd never, I haven't gotten it. Um, I've tried like 10 times. And anyway, I was photographing that scene, hoping, hoping I'd get good light and it was completely bluebird. Right? And I captured it and I thought I got a great photo. It was beautiful. Um, a couple of days later, this dude that was literally like at the exact same spot as me, he's a very well-known photographer posted the exact same scene with all these crazy red clouds above it. Okay, fine, whatever. You want to drop in new clouds, that's fine. But it's very unlikely to get that scene, that type of light in that scene. Like that's the ultimate for me, right? And his description was like super flowery, like, oh my God, this was one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. Talking about an experience that never occurred. Never exactly. That's the piece. That's the part that bothered me. Like, yeah. like trying to deceive the audience into believing that what you captured is something that you didn't. And that, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's the thing that annoys me to no end is when people do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll admit that when I was starting out and I realized what you could do with the warp tool, like I would warp mountains and stuff and make them taller and pointier and stuff and thought it looked cool. But when people would point it out, like, hey, did you warp this mountain? Because that's, like, not what it normally looks like. I I didn't, like, feel good with my answer, so I stopped doing it. And then also, like, now I don't do it because I just don't need to. Like, there's certain perspectives you can get that make it look impressive enough. Or, you know, if you're intentional with your composition and, and stuff like that, like, it's just not necessary. It really doesn't improve the image in any way. Yeah. Um, well, but, yeah, I just, I just felt kind of icky. It speaks, to, keep doing it. it speaks to your maturity as a human being. I mean, I feel like if someone asks you a question about something you did and your immediate response is to get defensive and lie, like that says a lot about your character as a person, right? 
Right. Um, Agreed. So anyway, <clears throat> that is a huge pet peeve I have is when people just completely manufacture a description for an image that is not in line with actually what they witnessed. That to me, that's just the ultimate fuckery. <laughs> <laughs> Good description. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like a viewer will still connect with you when you're truthful about it exactly. versus if you try to deceive them. Like, that's my yep. thing. And I've never understood, like, if you're really good at that kind of editing and you're honest about it, like, there's an audience out there that wants to learn how to do that. Right? Oh, and they're going to sure. take your workshops. They're going right. to worship you. And so I feel like you're just doing everyone, including yourself, a disservice by being deceptive about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. Paul, I saw you opened a uh, second beer. You're on number two already. I know. I'm like still on my first. Alre already? I mean, come on. Jeez, man. It's like what, hour seven? <laughs> this is number three, but I'm going to give you guys number two. It's. Uh... What? <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep it on the down low. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's uh, other half. I decided to go back to the well, um, Belmont Station here in Portland. Uh, mm. Had it in stock. You folks in uh, have been in Portland know what I'm talking about. Uh, yes. This is a Gouda. It's a uh, double dry hopped Imperial, and uh, it has uh, Citra, Strata, Comet, and Eclipse hops. Comes in at eight percent. It's pretty good. I mean, we've talked about other half here on the show. I mean. They were better before, kind of slipped a little bit. This one's, it's pretty good. Is that goat cheese? It's a little bit, it's a little malty, mm. a little malty. And I that's, fucking hate that's malty. That's the thing now, yeah. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> when it's I an IPA, back in. yeah, when it's an IPA, it shouldn't be malty in my opinion. What yeah, was the can art? I was trying to see, but it's like super. It's, it's, a, it's like Gouda cheese. Oh, okay. A bunch of I cheese triangles. Like cupcakes or cake? Like, I was like. Yeah, yeah, and I've had this one before. It's been probably, I think Jimmy shipped us some of this, uh, Bennett, a couple of years ago. I, I've never had uh, that one, but. You haven't? No, I've had a lot of theirs. Yeah, and the dates are good. You know, the dates were solid. Um, I've had this before. It's okay. It's okay. Not worth the calories on this one, but I'm going to drink it. It's not, I'm not going to pour it down the drain. I, it's, it's not that good bad, man. but it's, it's pretty good, but it's, but it is a little malty. And you know, I'm not a malty guy. Oh man, I am. <laughs> well, it depends uh, on the style, but I feel like a hazy IPA should never be malty. It should be bright, oh, citrusy, sure. hoppy. I like it citrus. You shouldn't citrus. have those like deep caramely, like butterscotch malty type flavors at all like syrupy nah fuck that you can see it's a little bit darker than normal it doesn't uh, look that means, bad no it's not that bad i mean it's not like super heavy malty that looks better than some other half ipas i've had lately oh dude yeah i mean some of them have been thin they've they've definitely fallen off um even those anniversary did you get some of those anniversary beers this not year? this year i got a few of them from jimmy and they were just okay you know and the year before mm. year before they were absolutely uh they were heaters they were great yeah they were good yeah so yeah anyways i'll give you guys number three in a couple of minutes <laughs> uh, this image is super cool black and white's perfect really nice image Brittany. i've been wanting to feature an image from her for a while because i like her stuff a lot so i'm glad that matt came through yeah, i've really sure. been enjoying her work lately yeah yeah, so I, I found her like a year ago, surprisingly, not very long ago. Yeah, just one last quick observation before we move on. Like to me, like focal length choice is really crucial for this image, um, just to get the visual weighting with the cloud interacting with the arch and the mm -hmm. lower left rock. Like, it's, it's kind of hard to tell what the focal length is. Like, is it wide or is it telephoto? Or, be, which I like. It's gotta be. It looks stacked a little bit, so it's gotta be fairly mid telephoto. <laughs> I would. I would think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe guess. around like 50 or 70. Mm -hmm. That'd be my guess. Yeah. I've never been to this arch, so I don't know how big it is. Pretty big. You can stand most, I think you can probably stand up in the middle of it, right? Okay. Like probably six feet tall at its tallest point, maybe. I mean, <clears throat> the only way to photograph this arch is to put a bunch of 16 millimeter barrel cactus in front of it. 
<laughs> Out of your pocket. Just <laughs> throw them on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I got some barrel cactus here in my pocket. I'm going to just toss them around. <laughs> speaking of barrel oh, cactus. Speaking of barrel cactus. Dude, this oh, is sick as fuck. So... Totally. This one was uh, in the NLPA. That's where I remember it from. Wow. And it was like third or fourth place for the category that I won last year. Not yes. to talk about oh. myself, but... Uh, <laughs> good, good flex. We're, we're do it, <laughs> <laughs> it was like me, then the Michael rest of Fry, them. then Alberto, or Alberto, then Michael Fry, and then this one. Yeah, I think that sounds right. And uh, do you know anything about this? So, like, my question is... I, I've photographed the same thing before. I found it mm -hmm. like in a canyon and it just happened to be blooming, but not this extensive. It was a way smaller patch. So was this in a garden, do you know, or is this out in the wild? Either way, it's super cool, but I'm just I curious. Actually, I actually don't know. I thought you guys investigate everybody's images and hammering them with questions and interrogate them and spy on them. And that's, wow. a, that's a really No, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, really, hey, that's a really good question. Um, does that change the value of the image? It doesn't. But for me, like I just don't enjoy photographing like botanical gardens because the experience for me just isn't the same as like when I'm in a wild place and like I'm like enveloped in the whole setting. It is different. I agree. But image wise, like I appreciate it just as much whether it is or not. I because to me it just looks really cool and it's. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I love I, this. I, I, haven't, I haven't had a chance to talk to them about it, but uh, I remember when I was doing prejudging, like I think I wanted to, I want to say out of like, I don't know, thousands of images, this was like one of 20 or 30 that I gave five stars. I was like, holy crap. Mm. Dude, it's so sick. Oh, yeah. It's just colors, perfect. Color separation. And this from Natalia actually, um, Harper, we did I mention. Yeah, and actually that photo of Alberto's was one of my favorites as well, the, the pine cone. Um, image. Seriously? I love that photo. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it is really nice. I love Alberto. Yeah. I'm going to see him in a couple weeks. Yeah. So anyway, this was um, this was definitely a standout from NLPA last year, and um, looking forward to seeing more of their images this year. Gosh. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah, I'd never heard of Natalia before. I mean, that's what's really been cool about running NLPA for me is like discovering all of these people who have just been like in the woodwork. Like, but that's what I was saying. Like when I asked you to share some images, I was like, I'm sure you know of like a ton of new people that you've discovered through the competition. It's honestly like, it's overwhelming. <laughs> there are so many out there that just don't get seen and it's amazing. Like they're so good. Yeah, and that's one of our missions is to like give people who don't have a big voice, at least a little bit of a platform for people to appreciate their work a little bit more. So same here, brother. That's what we're doing. We're such we good do people. It. We're such we fucking great people. Yeah. Yep. Falling in line. <laughs> <laughs> we're just vision. like lifting That's... the community. Yeah. We're thirsty for new people. David's goals with that nature vision magazine too, is to feature new people. And that's what our greatest feedback has been is that people have enjoyed seeing, you know, new names, new people, new styles. So it's super rewarding because yeah, these people deserve a platform for sure. Yeah. So many Absolutely. talented. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like typically images like this on Instagram or whatever, Oh yeah. like, you know, other photographers are going to see it and be like, wow, that's really great. But for the most part, the public is going to be like, oh, that's pretty. It's flowers, whatever. But, you know, because it's not like crazy explosive sky and big peaks and all that. But to me, it's just like almost about as perfect as you can get with when it comes to this subject. So, mm -hmm. always, Dude, it's yeah, the so balance sick. here is impeccable. It's so sick. I always like to say scenes that whisper still have so much to say. And this. Oh, yeah. That. Well, and you got. That's beautiful, Jennifer. See, color contrast you have <laughs> texture contrast you have patterns you have lines you have shapes um you have placement like every like it's the just color has it has all yeah. it checks all the boxes right? oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah when we're when we're judging that's a lot of times what we'll do is like okay what does it have okay and then okay and what else and sometimes images like only make it a couple steps down that path and that's it so like sometimes that's 
if you have something that has like 20 or 30 things that going for it, then it's like got a really good chance of winning. So, mm. and the organization hey. of those two, like hey. what it takes to kind of organize the chaos into a perfect pattern like this. Paul's face hey, looks twice as red right now too, while we're looking at this. Hey Bennett, write, write that shit down. He just gave what? you the recipe. He just gave you the recipe, dude. Come on, figure he it already, out. He already <laughs> knows the recipe. I don't have a chance here. <laughs> Matt Payne says this. I was I was surprised that nobody like ever said anything to me about that because uh, I I honestly entered the second and third year thinking that I would never win anything again because I had won the first year, and so I was really surprised when I did, and I was like, oh, are people going to say like? Oh, they just pick their favorite photographers and their friends or, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't. Would you guys think that if it happened to you? Like, no, I get it. But no. at the same your, time, your work like... speaks for itself, dude. I mean, right. That's, yeah. that's the thing right there. It's not, it's not like you, 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 you're picking artists that just really produce fantastic work and it's, it shows it's really cool. Cool. Everyone speak. Everyone speak. Everyone speak. <laughs> hey, I, fu I fucking dropped the mic there. Yeah. Holy shit. That's the end of the episode right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to write that shit down. I'll close with yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. This one's crazy. I've, I've seen this formation. I think it's in Norway. I've seen it before, <laughs> but this image is really interesting. Did this thing fall over or something, or am I thinking of something else? I am not sure. I mean, I think this was photographed on film in the 90s. Mm. Yeah, this is a four by wow. five image. It doesn't have the film look, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. it has, it's like really high def looking and like... Yeah, yeah so just... Paul Wakefield, he's kind of more well known in the UK. Uh, he's kind of one of the landscape heroes over there. Um, I recently had him on my podcast and it was a very long conversation. Had a really good time with it. Um, he sent me his two books. Um, so I was really fortunate to get to see all his work in his, in his books. But, um, for me, this, this image is like, for me, it's like a masterclass in composition. Um, and what I like about it is like, it's just so well balanced. It's center weighted, which, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, never put stuff in the middle. No, it's not true. Um, and this is a perfect example of why not. You just need to have other objects in the frame that help to balance out the scene. And I think what else makes this work is you have these very contrasting shapes. You know, if you have mm -hmm. these sharp rocks and you got this weird funky ocean formation and then you have this puddle with a round circle in the middle. So it's got all these contrasting shapes and, you know, it's not amazing light. Probably looks like it was captured on like a ND filter if you were to do this digitally, but mm -hmm. um, to me, it's just almost perfect compositionally. So that's why I don't I know why people say like you should never center something because if you have perfect symmetry, it begs for something to be in the center. Like yeah. it's asking for it. There's like no other way around that. That's exactly. one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say that. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Do what works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really sick. I, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not super great. familiar with Paul's work. I don't know if I had seen this one before. Did you say this was one of the ones that came up in the competition or no? No, he just, he was on my podcast. Um, it's in yeah. his book. He has What's this his book called? <laughs> I think when we don't uh, mess up my book, dude, don't drop it. It's, <laughs> it's, a, huge, it's, huge, it's a huge book. Yeah, it's, that's a honker. Yeah, but it's called the landscape. The landscape. Yeah. Hmm. And it's that's cool. Really, really beautiful. And it's not it's, in print anymore. It's like sold out. You probably. can buy it. You can buy. Oh, it okay, it's that's his latest one. You said. No, his latest one is all about. It's a cultural book from India. Hmm. Hmm. And all all the all the images in there were photographed like from like 1984 to like 92 or something. It's it's nuts. Oh wow. And he just yeah. put it out? Yeah. Wow. That's wow. dope. Talk about yeah. letting it marinate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's got, I feel, like, I feel like he's got um, 
just a really good one of those people who just has a really good knack for composition. You know, like all of his photos just work. They just work. One of those guys that knows what they're doing. Yeah. He has jealous. a graphic design background too, right, Matt? Is mm. he also like was a graphic designer or something? Yeah, I think well he's he don't yeah, I think so. I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. So yeah, I, I've seen this photograph multiple times. I think Dog Ole Nordog has some photos of it and stuff. Oh, but um uh -huh. this is definitely one of the coolest photos I've seen of it. And where was this? I'm it's sorry. in Norway, I believe. Oh Norway. So that rock um in the water that reminds me of has I'm sure you guys have seen Kekawanda? the mushroom. Well, the it's mushroom water. rock in Death Valley. Do you know oh. what I'm talking about? It totally yeah. reminds me of this. So I'm just Cap challenged says, to me is like, oh, I wonder what rock formation this is and like what because it's so similar. Well, it was photographed so long ago. This could have been Death Valley back when there was water there. <laughs> Caption says, Canon Steinen, Norway, October 2010. Whoa. So it could have been, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, pretty. I wasn't even at drinking age yet. <laughs> I was just learning photography. Still learning. Gotten a camera. Oh, yet. Always learning. Zing. Eric's such a young pup. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So this is another entry from NLPA uh, oh, last yeah. year, and what I liked about it is that I can't it's insane. tell what the scale is. Like, yeah. You know, is, no context. Is it? Yeah. Aerial? It could be like an aerial. Is or it aerial? not? Is it close up with a? You know, it's fourteen. Yeah, baby dunes. I don't know. I mean, there's not that many clues, like really. Area. I mean, I feel like it's aerial, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it forces you to kind of wonder and ask those questions, I think, makes it a really good, you know, really great photograph. And then you've got. If it's not an areas. aerial, then he's on top of a really tall dune to get that perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. But anyway, I, I love the, the the flow too. Like it all kind of just flows into that upper middle section. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like whoa. Late to the party, bro. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Dude. <laughs> that hit the restroom. Holy shit. <laughs> That's dope as fuck. Had to throw up his last beer. <laughs> yeah, I go in there and purge. For number three. I go in there and purge every three. Wasn't worth keeping it down. I gotta make room for fourth. Too malty. Oh. Too malty. Bring on the citra. <laughs> um yeah, this one's really sick. Uh, definitely, like, just when you think you've seen every Dune image possible, you see something like this, you're like, whoa, this is way different than anything I ever imagined. Yeah, yeah and it's, I like it as, like, the repeating curves, too. Mm -hmm. I think that works really well. It's not... Well, and also the sand here isn't, like, pristine. It's, like, kind of messy and oh, fucked yeah. up, but it's cool. Like, it, yeah. it's a positive yeah. attribute of this one. Yep. Yeah. Is this, like, yeah, the, the, the where it says this. in Namibia? Uh, yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's not Death Valley. Valley. Yeah. It's gonna be something like uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe. Dubai or something. There's some looks like, like he does a... There's Paul. Looks like he does a looks like he does a lot of wildlife. He's based yeah, out of yeah, South Africa. South Africa. Right. Yeah, I bet just Namibia then. Yeah, he's got a, he's got some cool stuff. But I will say one of the things that I like about NLPA, just saying, is um all the images that we share you know that you know that they've you know it's it's an actual image you know it's not like something someone yeah constructed in photoshop or it's ai like it's it's a very well edited image that hasn't been super manipulated you know it actually represents a moment in time that that person experienced because we check all the raw files so you know. yeah what is kind of something cool is like that people like what is the thing that people do the most often that disqualifies their photos from the competition in terms of editing i would say like oh uh, heavy-handed cloning because mm -hmm. i get a lot of questions from people they're like hey like what can i do to my image like if i do this will it be okay i'm like i don't know dude like just don't do anything and be safe i but, mean uh, there, there's a big misperception that you can't edit at all <laughs> You know, well, I don't mean like that. I, they're usually asking like warping, cloning, stuff like that. I'm like, just just take off the cloning layer entirely and just submit it like that because... Yeah. Yeah. It def I mean, if it's like tiny little things, cloning's usually not that noticeable or it's like a gray area. But if it's like taking up a big chunk of real estate and then you clone it out, like that doesn't work. 
Um, so there's a lot of gray area in that. And oftentimes when we're doing prejudging and then we, when we get the raw file and we see what's been done, there's stuff that we're like, mm, it's kind of in that gray zone. We'll give it, we'll pass it on to the judges and see what they think. Cause we don't want to be the final decision makers, which. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's a tough hot seat question for you, Matt. Are you afraid that the competition entices people to manipulate things in the field? since they can't do it in editing that's, and like, that's my like question. break branches or like move shit that's, around that might be disruptive to the ecosystem. Yeah. That's something Bellino and I've talked about yeah. before. That's I mean, I'm not yeah. sure I'm worried about it, but I do think that that's something that I would discourage people from doing, which is one of the reasons why we put in the rules that we want people to follow the nature first principles. Um, so but people really, also want to win competitions. Yeah. yeah. And some people are willing to do whatever it takes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the people do some pretty wild stuff in landscape photography. I, I, I've heard all the stories, man. There's people do. It's some, pretty ironic. It it's is, like, shouldn't you it? love the thing that you're spending your life photographing at least a little right. bit? <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And doing it for the right reasons, just like, yeah. this is sick. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, this is so good. Pick. Do, you guys, do you guys think good the pick, uh, you guys think the horizon line is level, or do you think you kind of just tilted the camera to kind of take advantage of the curves? And... Yeah, I think it's not level at all. I don't think it is either. I think it's, you know, that's a that's another great point for people to realize is like you don't if it's just kind of like there's no sky or horizon. If you line, shoot below the horizon, really yeah, you don't need, need to. You can kind of manipulate the angles, especially like in canyons and stuff like that. That's um. That's a lesson I learned in Yosemite from Alex Noriega is like, we were photographing these oak trees mm -hmm. and the background behind the oak trees was just blue. Like there yeah. was no context for how the orient, like there was nothing to say, how should it be? So you yep. could tell your camera like this and nobody would ever know just to make the composition more interesting. So hmm. I think it's something. Just tilt your camera, Matt. No one's ever going to know, dude. No one's going to find out. <laughs> no one's going to do it, bro. You're not going to yeah. go to yeah. Photography jail. <laughs> Photography. It'll be okay, dude. Just do it. Don't worry awesome. about it. I mean, I think it only works. Everybody's doing it. Yeah. I think it only works if um, if there's objects, if the objects in the frame, it doesn't matter if they're level. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're like nondescript, just right. like texture, yeah. or, you know, not right. really uh, decipherable. Right. Yeah, like here is just taking advantage of maximizing those curves, like just by rotating it. So like he's just using what's visually available to him and just to kind of maximize, which is right. Exactly. Could you could you imagine rolling up on this scene like in Death Valley? You'd be like, what the fuck? I was just going to say. <laughs> I'm never like, leaving. I'm yeah. just going to like pitch a tent. No, I feel like a lot of people would leave because yeah. they're like, oh, the sand dunes aren't pristine. They're not. That's oh. what I was going to say. Dude. Like, the Some of my like favorite shit. conditions in Death Valley and those mesquite dunes are after like hor like horrendous rainstorms oh, because you get textures uh, like this and people think, oh, these aren't perfect, they're not smooth, and they leave. And it's like, this is like dude. I just it's an awesome take on these dunes. I mean, it's nature. They're not oh, always pristine and perfect. Exactly. Dude, I'd have a belt around my neck choking myself out. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking I fucking said it, Bennett. Would you be in Michael Bellino's room doing that right now? <laughs> may or may not be. No. And that was before the recording, so the the oh, audience gosh. isn't pretty. Oh so. yeah, that's right. Thank Don't comment. Try it. Sorry. Wow. That's right. You gotta throw that shit out there every once in a while. See if it sticks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dude, I got that in the fridge. You are you cracking that baby tonight? Yeah, this is my second one. I had one over the Christmas. Christmas break, either Christmas or New Year's, but this is a Life After Death Star Baklava edition Dude, by so Equilibrium in Jay that. Wakefield with Mostra Coffee. Mostra Coffee is really good too, by the way. Their Ghost Bear Espresso whole bean coffee is amazing. You can order it online. Uh, I'm so stoked to hear about this because I may crack mine tonight as well. Yeah, no, it's really good. I love this one. Um, all of the Life After Death Stars series has been incredible but this is a an imperial stout with emperor's toasted coconut raw coconut cacao nibs mustra kinetic blend coffee 
pistachios, double honey, and lactose. Dang, oh my good. goodness. Hey. Bennett's, Bennett's gonna go. Bennett's gonna go smoke a cigarette after he drinks that thing. I was it's like, say. It's like, it looks like motor oil. <laughs> He's gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna sh- freaking shower, cigarette, and we'll I'm gonna just call see it him a, leave. What do you I'm gonna call it, call it a wrap. What do you think the viscosity rating on that is? Fifteen. How do they? What is the? Yeah, what's the scale? <laughs> Dude, look at that bad boy. Is there an official scale for viscosity? Yeah, I think so. That's like the like you get different weights of oil. So there's caffeine in mm. that, right? Dude. Very little. So okay. when they like age stouts on, on coffee beans, um, it's not enough to disrupt your sleep or anything like that. Okay. It's probably like the amount that decaf coffee yeah. has. Don't worry. The alcohol will do that for you. <laughs> 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 Oh, now Matt's all high and mighty. He's on his high horse. <laughs> yeah. Looking down on us. Yeah. Very judgmental. <laughs> I'm feeling this very small. This dude quit because he blew his liver out, and he, he, they said they're not going to do it again. They're not going to give him another liver replacement. Yeah. They only get one. He's got, his, he's got the liver strap on now. It's just freaking <laughs> some bolts on. <laughs> give me yeah, a non-filter. Amazing. This thing is pure dessert. It sounds like it. Goodness. <laughs> See, this is the problem, Bennett. Is like that's the kind of beer I would drink like for a day of. Dude, that's why that's why I opened it because I know you like stouts. Dude, I see that you guys see that bead of sweat on Payne's forehead. Oh, yeah. that shit is just like right here. <laughs> he's just by going, the, we'll have him drinking by the end of the episode. We'll have him relapse. Yeah, he's, he's probably like, got some in the fridge still. He's like, fuck it, bitches, I'm down. Modelo. He's got a Bud Light in the fridge somewhere. <laughs> He's like he's a shotgun good... it and smash it on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, if Colorado had some shit like that, I'd be, I'd grab Bowman's belt. He's like, he'll be running to the liquor store tonight. One hundred percent. Oh, dude, he totally is with a pack of Marlboros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this, wow. this scene is this, rock bottom. This dude, scene, this is oh, yeah. so dope. This scene is like a sneaker because when you see it at first you're like oh it's just a tree right but um so this is lee nordby he's also coming up on my podcast and he sent he sent this over to me and i was like damn and what's awesome about it is the shape of the rocks mimics the trees it's almost like the shadow of the tree even yeah. though it's not like it's just bare rocks but mm-hmm. it looks like the shadow of the tree and it's just it has the same shape but it's on a different angle um to me it's just like a wow. perfect minimalistic scene like but it has like multiple layers of depth you know all the things we were talking about before texture it looks like a huge arrowhead, arrowhead. yeah yeah exactly what i thought too this is so nice so cool. I think so yeah i love i love the small tree right next to it it's like uh yeah oh it has to have it it has to have it yeah it's essential mm-hmm. oh yeah I mean, yeah, cool image without, but with it, it's just elevated. And this you're is scroll, another. You're scrolling through it, though. If it's not there, you're just like, okay, whatever. But add that tree, some that depth, and yeah, oh, man, this is so good. Right. Mm. And this is the this is the other thing I like about mm. Lee is um he all his photography is like around Banff, mm. and and if you know if you think of Banff, it's like big Colorado Rockies, you know, you've got Lake Abraham, you've got all the big lakes everyone always photographs the big peaks but all his work is like super tight and small scene type work in the rockies so to me that's like a really nice thing that he's done to like differentiate himself in that area so i i really appreciate his photography yeah Yeah, i'm scrolling scrolling through right now and he's an instant follow i followed him within the first five images of looking and it's all black and white as well like it's it's pretty incredible yep i'll have to look him up super creative before yeah, he does workshops with Paul Ziska and oh. um, David Dave Brosha, those guys. Okay. Yeah. I think it, Offbeat, I think is the name of their company, but yeah. Dude, nice share. Thanks. Yeah, I cool. want to follow him, but he's not following me, so I'm like... <laughs> oh. No, just gonna, give him a little teaser. Don't yeah. follow him, but like a yeah. couple of images. I'll give him two yeah, weeks to follow me back, and I'll unfollow him pull if he him, doesn't. Pull him into the fold. Yeah, the tease. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm thinking like about it, first. but I'm not. But I'm not really there yet. Yeah, I'm like bombing him right now. 
He's, right? he's getting a like bomb from all of us, dude. That's, that's <laughs> I, get the, I get that shit all the time. Like people will like, like like 20 of my photos and they'll leave a comment and like four or five of them, but they don't follow me. And yeah. it's like, yeah. they're waiting for you to follow them. Fishing. I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's called blue balls. Yeah. Well, it's called, <laughs> I'm not playing that game. That's what that's called. <laughs> exactly, dude. Freaking savages. Right? Like, yeah. Oh my god, that's what so I'm gonna weird. think of now every time I see someone do that to me. <laughs> you know what? Jennifer's like, I'm getting blue balls. Blue ball this is fucked up. <laughs> god, it's such a tease. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you just gotta re when they do that to you, just respond and say, hey, quit fucking blue balling me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I could take that in so many different ways, but we won't. Yeah, this image is wild, though. It's uh, super cool. That's too funny. Super simple. Mm -hmm. Black but and white so is much. the only way, too. Yeah. Yep, I agree. This is so cool. There's, there's a lot of, I mean, there's so much really great stuff to shoot up there in the winter. I mean, yeah. You can just, I mean, you can shoot the classics or you can just like dig a little bit deeper and just really get into shooting some uh, really cool stuff. And, it, and it's so, it's so accessible up there for a area where there's just lined with peaks and snow, ice. I mean, you can really do some good stuff up there. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I, I would love to photograph those methane bubbles and, you know, that's some cool mm -hmm. stuff, but yeah. Little scenes like this, I mean, that just, to me, that just shows he has really good vision and. For and, sure. Yeah. So. I think you, I think you can do so much better than the classic stuff. I mean, there's just so much like, there's so much really great opportunities up there. Yeah. Also, I feel like patchy snow fields like this, like people kind of avoid them. Right. Like, oh, that's nasty. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, it's patchy, messy, but. Yeah, I don't want that. Uh, yeah. But he killed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Cheers, Lee. Good. Beautiful. Wow. Whoa. So how did he a, take this sound picture sound? without waking up the reindeer? Crazy. Dude. Oh, come on. <laughs> so this is uh, Peter Mather. He was also on my podcast recently. He's a um, mostly wildlife photographer up in um, Tombstone mm -hmm. area. And he does a lot of camera traps. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I've always had like mixed feelings about camera traps. Like, did you really take the photo? Did you, you know what I mean? Like, but I think the way he does camera traps, it's really awesome to, um, how he's like pre visualizing what he's going to capture before it happens. Because, you know, if you have a dead caribou, like he'll just find dead caribou and he knows that there's going to be wolverines or Arctic foxes. Yeah. Checking whatever. out the carcass. Exactly. And like, so so you know did he kill I, the caribou no. <laughs> okay Jeez. but i what i like about this is like you have that ghost fox yeah. in the back yeah like, exactly. well yeah that's it's, the crazy thing like you notice the the carcass in the immediate foreground and then you notice this like predatory character that's like yeah ghosty and, and... It's, what's crazy about this photo for me is like it's multi-dimensional in terms of um god what did um I'm going to butcher this, but it's like, it, it represents multiple le levels of ideas, right? Because it it's okay. It's a, it's a Fox and a dead caribou, but like, because it's blurry, it's almost like a spirit and it's like how the right. caribou spirit is leaving and it's now a Fox. Like it just it's makes very you metaphorical, imagine. very yeah. Uh, poetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has a lot going for it. And so that's what, Stop me. I mean, it's got, it's grainy, right? Like it was probably shot at mm -hmm. pretty high SO. I mean, it's not technically perfect, but man, does it evoke so much emotion and story? Like who cares about yeah, the It's truth? really haunting and, and it's super and, haunting. And he's got tons of stuff like this on his website. I mean, it's, it's nuts. Like he's got like grizzly bears that have been blasted with, like they fall into these lakes because they're hunting for salmon in the middle of winter. And then they get out and then they, and then that water just freezes instantly on their f fur. And so they're covered in ice. Oh, wow. And they just, they look like they're wearing like a 
Samurai. Samurai. Like samurai armor, but it's ice. Like it's crazy. Huh. He's got some really cool stuff. You check it definitely out. Check I know, I'm looking out. him up right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a good dude for sure. Really cool stuff. And he's got really, really awesome images of Wolverines as well. Hmm. Um, so anyway, this one though spoke to me because of that multi-level aspect to it. You know, it's not it's just transcends the literal. Mm -hmm. And I'm, Dude, this I'm is like, such a killer share. That's so good. Super nice. unique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. His stuff is amazing. Isn't that great? And he's like another one of those dudes kind of flying under the radar a little bit. Look at that. You know, like just kind of doing Soul his shooter. thing. Yeah, those bears covered in the isn't ice. That, isn't that crazy? I think I found wow. one. That is so cool. It's so badass. Yeah, this is really great. Yeah, so for me, he's he's he does some really 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 cool stuff, and like hearing Seems like him a talk guy about, that has a story or two to tell. Yeah, <laughs> hearing him for talk sure. about how he sets up those camera traps is pretty pretty interesting too. Yeah, I think it's interesting. So, I mean, I love wildlife photography, but sometimes it just feels like people were going down a checklist. I'm probably going to get pitchforks for this, but, you know, I kind of feel like <laughs> people were just going down a checklist, like, oh, a mountain goat. This is a safe space because nobody watches this show, Jennifer. <laughs> um, but, you know, like a grizzly bear. Oh, check. But right. We There's have like the iconic bears. animals that you have right. to have. But I mean, mm -hmm. this caribou isn't even alive. But look at the emotion. Look at the feeling from this image. There is such a story here that's so much more powerful than just like a snapshot of like a grizzly bear. So I applaud wildlife photographers that kind of step outside the box and share these stories. I mean, it's just it's so much more impactful. For sure. Fox yeah. Grizzly bears. Totally, yeah. yeah. And that and that ghosting oh, in the background. Yeah. I mean, it's just like it just adds another element to it. It's just so um, there's a lot of feelings here. Yeah. For me. And, and you would and the never... twilight works perfectly. Like the evening, it's either evening yeah. or morning, but the time of day works mm -hmm. perfectly for that story. Oh, well, it's probably. And to produce the ghosting effect. So it all works so seamlessly together. It was probably like November or something. So it's like, like the sun never quite sets kind of a deal. Or never, you know, it's like. Way rises. Dark ish. It's like all that hair and stuff too, like all over the ground. Like this thing has already been. Yeah. Comped up a bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just, sick. And to, cool. to your point, Jennifer, I think the reason why we don't see more images like this is because it's so hard. It is. No, totally. Wildlife photography. I mean, I, I do, I'm doing more and more of it now with Munch um, on my trips and it's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not easy. That's why, you know, when people are able to capture something like this, that's so outside the box, it's like, I completely applaud you. Exactly. Yeah, I yep. have mad respect for wildlife photographers. I definitely, I mean, I, I shoot wildlife if it walks into my frame, you know, I'm kind yep. of like. If it's handed to you on a platter. Yeah, like that. But <laughs> I don't put in the hours of patience that most of them do. Right. This is just. Yeah. Stunning. And he, he, referenced, he references it as a wolf killed caribou. Hmm. Yeah, I figure the Arctic fox is looking for scraps. It's not the. That's exactly it. it. Yeah. Right. Yep. That's exactly it. That's yeah. a great image. Wow. Well, Super cool. Yeah, super evocative, powerful, poetic. Mm -hmm. He's got some cool landscape stuff too. I mean, if you look through his his uh, Instagram, he's got some uh, he's got some nice stuff. Yeah, very cool. Thought, thought I'd mix it up for y'all. No, that's sick, man. That's a I really know, good. Uh, you brought some a good shit. mix. Yeah, freaking gangster. Dang. <laughs> Matt P <laughs> delivering the goods. All right, oh, this, shit. this is one of the. All right. oh, most insane no photographs I have ever, 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 <laughs> ever oh, shit. seen in my life. Like, this, <laughs> this is one of those photos that's like, this better go down in landscape photography history because, like, this is never happening again. Yeah. It's sick. It's so oh. sick. Insane. When I first saw this photo. explain what this is. Okay. Well, so... it's, just, it's just crazy how AI has gotten this good. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly, but I I'm pretty sure it's just um, it's uh, looking into it's a, a puddle of oils yeah. with trees and reflecting in it. Right, mm -hmm. but it, the oils are in the shape of a crescent moon. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's not really the moon. That's what makes it 
so good. It's witchcraft. It looks like the moon, <laughs> but it's not the moon. Wow. You know, like when I first saw this photo, I was like, that's maybe the best photo I'm going to see this year. And that was. And this like, was in the competition, right? It was not. Oh. Uh, I hey, thought that's Mac, where I found it because you guys. No, Put it to Mac. Wasn't. Enter this into the competition. Oh, or was no. Mac? So was Mac on your podcast or something? Because I, I found no. this. Uh -uh. How did I find this photo? Uh, I, I sent it to you for this show. No, 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 no. I, I saw this when it was posted, like six months ago. It wasn't yeah, that long ago. I, I remember think November, seeing it. November, November ish. I'll never forget. And I'm glad you shared this because I, for some reason, I, I forgot to put this in my queue because I was this blown guy, away. This guy, Max Stone, he's mostly a conservation photographer down in the Everglades area. Um, so he does a lot of that type of photography. But when I saw him post this image, I was just like, bro, psycho. that is next level. Like, you know, it's again, it's it's like kind of like the last image, like it has multiple levels to it, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm always looking for those types of images like, OK, what else is it? Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. And then this one just hits you over the freaking head with a two by four. I guess. So I've I've photographed reflecting trees in iridescent biofilm before. And even if you're at F22, it's one or the other. You're shooting the surface and the trees aren't visible or mm -hmm. you're shooting the reflection and you get some of the color, but you're not getting the shape of that moon like that. Um, yeah. So this must be like a crazy focus stack or mm -hmm. maybe it's like, I, I don't know what else would change like um, but it doesn't look like a stack. I mean, there's stuff out of focus. Yeah, okay. right. But in order to get the oil on the surface in focus and the reflection, it could be a blend. I'm not sure. But it. But either way, I mean, the concept here is amazing. Yeah, like, it's so. Impressive. Yeah, I'm not diminishing it. I'm just saying, like, technically, this would yeah. be challenging as well because I know. when I've photographed anything similar to this, it's one or the other. It's not. Yeah. I've never been able to shoot the pattern and the reflection. Yeah, I shot something in Yosemite similar to this, but I didn't focus on the trees. I just I chose the oil because I had to choose like one or the other in that time. You you basically have to go to infinity to get the reflection in focus. Yeah. And then to shoot the surface, you have to be like at the closest. Yeah, and I love that he left the leaves in there. I mean, it just yeah. Yeah, they're kind of like flying around like uh, little fairies or something. That's mm -hmm. so cool. Even the like the blue luminescent stuff on the left edge and almost it's reminiscent of like the milky way core mm -hmm. like you really want to consider this yeah. like the night sky it's really cool yeah mm -hmm. wow. so sick he's got some really great stuff i know well. i just followed him i'm like wow he's got a lot of cool stuff yeah 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 absolutely yeah some blew me away i just love how it's like so crazy looking but it's also so simple like mm -hmm. hey, it's one of those photos where it's like why didn't i ever think of this like kind of makes you angry mm -hmm. self-reflection yeah matt went and took a quick shit uh, i had to go get my belt my belt and some lube <laughs> <laughs> hey what? now we're getting somewhere wait so matt's matt's a silver one right now yeah matt's not even drinking yeah. Yeah, now we're picking up the pace. That statement. Trying to pick up the pace. <laughs> <laughs> the word I, I remember the word I was looking for earlier. It's a minor white term called equivalence. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, oh look at this one. Oh <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> come on. Killer. <laughs> come Wait, on. Was that was that minor white or was that Edward Weston? Because he's the one that shot the cloud project that was for equivalence, wasn't he? Uh, Weston was, yeah. But I think Minor White wrote about equivalence. I could be wrong. Where's Guy Tal when you need him? We need a fact check section of this podcast. <laughs> At the end, you know, come back on and fact check all the... Right, yes, like, fact check. It turns out what Matt said is completely wrong. It's fine. <laughs> all right, so this photo, uh, when I... Ever yeah, who is this first, by? Jennifer Renwick. <laughs> it's, oh, shit. I have to look him up. It has just lived rent-free in my head forever. Like, it's just stuck there. And I keep telling Jennifer I'm going to buy a print of it, and I keep forgetting to, but it is. Oh, to goodness. Me, I'll just give you one. You don't have to buy it. Oh, it's no, super you, dope. You got to be paid for your awesome work. I mean, it's just. I have no idea how you photographed it. I mean, I've photographed dunes a lot, and 
I've never seen anything like this. I look for it. I'm like, oh, I gotta find that stuff. So That's this, the... I can tell you the Sorry, story. not Edward Weston, it was Alfred Stieglitz. That's what I was thinking oh. too. Oh, Stieglitz. Stieglitz. Okay. But I'm drinking, so I have an excuse. Matt doesn't, he's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Matt. Uh, no, this was, so this takes place, there is like a very finite window of time in the morning when you get this rim light on the dunes. Mm -hmm. And I always describe this to my students and I, I try to prepare them at least like 30 minutes before and I show them like stages of light. You know, I said, this is going to happen, then you're going to have this, then you're going to have this. And I try to prepare them so they know, because this lasts for maybe like a minute and a half, two minutes before it starts to get super harsh. Yep. And I was just positioned with a telephoto lens one morning when I was out by myself because I had seen this happen quite a few times. And I thought, you know what, I see things here that I'd like to capture. And yeah, this was at almost 300 just shooting. I was up on a high dune shooting across facing the sunrise as the light came up and that rim light just last a few. I mean, it's so fast and I was just prepared for it, but yeah, yeah I, 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 I did this. <clears throat> I knew that's what it was. I mean, I I photographed similar stuff like in white sands. I'm like straight into the sun, right at sunset where you get just those slivers of light on the bands of dunes and but never with this this curvature. Like yeah. to me, that's what <clears throat> sets this image apart is those those super like, sexy curves, man. Like, yeah, woo. sensual. Very and you sweat. And this is a good example of being okay with not everything in focus because I shot it and realized if you look super close at that middle undulation, it's not completely in focus. And it bothered mm. me for the longest time. Like I posted it on my website, I posted it on Instagram. And David kept telling me, like, it, who cares? He's like, it's not about that. Like, look at the light, look at the patterns, look at the shapes. And it just, it bothered me for the longest time, but now it doesn't because, you know, I've just, I've come to the conclusion, even our own eyes don't see perfectly like throughout a scene, like completely sharp. So it's just one of those lessons that I've learned and I've embraced it. And yeah, but this was the first yeah. image that kind of made me go, okay, it's okay that it's not completely perfect. Like you just ruined this image for me, Jennifer. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <see? I laughs> now everyone's going to be now. zooming in on it going, oh my God, look at this. <laughs> No, it's so good. This is the best. This is the best light. Yeah. I, at that time of day is, is is absolutely the best. Yeah. Such a good and, shot. And I. Thank you, Matt. I, I'm honored. Yeah, There's course. no such thing as bad light, but there is such thing as the best light. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> I best. feel like if I was composing this scene, I would have messed it up. I feel like I would have. Yep. I would have uh, tried to create too much balance with the top and the bottom. Um. So I appreciate that you you it, it almost has this flow of like big bigger not as big small like I well I like, and the middle curve is opposing right yeah I mean, right. that's what makes it work is that yeah that's what originally drew my eye in I think it'd be mm -hmm. boring and mundane if they were all doing the same thing it's like okay yeah you captured like these three lines that are like in harmony within one another but so what who cares like, well I'd still be a good photo but this is better me it's the best Aww. what would you rate this one Matt <laughs> oh shit Jennifer rate it right now five obviously I have never entered the NLPA. Why not, Jennifer? I don't know. You know, it's just, it's not out of any re like particular reason. I, sadly, it's probably just more of like time and I just haven't, I'm so behind on my processing. I just, yeah. Scared to share your raw files? Totally. Oh yeah. That's me. <laughs> I spend like five <laughs> minutes editing things and I'm out of there because I'm so not a technical person. So. <laughs> have you entered Blino? No, I'm not a big contest guy. That's okay. Yeah. See, that's I'm what I wanted. One to say. like 20 years ago or like 15 years ago. That's it. What do you got but against contest? Having said man? that, Matt knows this. Having said that, this would be the one I would enter is in LPA. Because yeah. besides, it's going to make people break off branches and pick out like living plants to get their composition perfect. Besides that thing, um, which is a joke, um, it's still the best <laughs> out there. Like just your books, so, like when you gave me that first book, Matt, I was absolutely floored by the level and the quality of the images, like surpassing any other competition I've seen out there. Like you guys have done such a great job. 
Yeah, yeah I feel I like agree. as long as competitions are going to exist in the photography, nature photography community, uh, this is the one competition that I would prefer to see above any other one. So yeah, that's I, I would like enter yours, it. Matt. Because sure. if I don't enter, I'm not supporting it. I'm not helping it stick around. Dude, that's yeah, I, I may actually I enter in, in the future. Like, again, I may very well may enter. Mm -hmm. uh, you support it so much that you don't support it. Who, me? I bought the book this year. That's one way of supporting it. Still, though, sure. dude, like 30 extra bucks wouldn't have hurt entering <laughs> six photos. How much is the book? <laughs> 70. There you go. I bought the higher priced item, the book, not the entry fee. Yeah. Bolino's all, Bolino's all in. What bang for the buck? But here's the thing, right? Like, in order for it to be a good competition, we have to have the best photographers enter. Which is why I believe so why, why would I even enter? Enter, That's the thing. <laughs> You've got great. You, you just want my money. This is to say, this is the money making side of the photography. Oh yeah, I'm I'm rolling in dough. Right I'm joking. Now. I'm joking. <laughs> you know, you know me. No, I, if I if I had to enter one, I would definitely enter the NLPA for sure. I enjoy oh. competitions. I mean, I just got done judging 900 images for another photo competition. I mean, I enjoy what? it. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. So. How did mine do on that one? Oh my gosh, Matthew. Yeah, I'm like going through images and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know like all of these. <laughs> zero, 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 zero. Right, rejected, rejected. Oh, Jennifer's, no. rejected. Jennifer's pulling out the hatchet. <laughs> She's just clubbing, <laughs> clubbing people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Um, zero stars. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. I enjoyed Who's it. Who's next? It was super fun. Um, but yeah, I just... Yeah, I just lately I just haven't had anything to enter. I entered the International Landscape Photographer of the Year like four years ago, and I entered like five things. And based on their scoring system, they all got like C's and D's if they were like letter grades. And I was just like absolutely crushed. And I was like, okay, that's it. But yeah. I would do NLPA. And I had to get over too that that meant that I'm not a bad photographer. Like that was just somebody's opinion. Well, and that competition, you're competing against people who are full yeah. on compositing everything. Right. It's not even the same sport. No, exactly. But Although yeah. I did get two images in their top 200 last year. I noticed that, yeah. Straight yeah. images, not composites. That was more of just like a, I wonder if I can do that. <laughs> Does but, Tim, he judges that one as well, right? Tim Parkin? He does. He's part of that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should hear his stories. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah, it's pretty, their process is like, not to dog on other competitions, but like, they don't do any live conversations between judges. Like, they don't, it's all score driven. So it's, there's no, there's no discussing of photography. It's just, you give it a score and the stuff that's scored the highest gets, it's through that's it period done interesting mm. whereas like it's interesting i was listening to a podcast about human cognition not that long ago and they were talking about people who you know like if you're judging like a competition like that you might judge the images completely differently based on the time of day actually the the podcast was about judges like criminal judges Right, where and like they if were, they come back after lunch, they're more they're saying, merciful and less likely to give like. No, it's the other way around. Sentences. Like if there's if the weather is nice and if it's first thing in the morning, and if their sports team won the day before, they're likely to give uh, lower sentences. Mm. Um, oh, interesting. You are that's so interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, um, and so that's why your whole why, life depends on. Yeah, that, that's how the why Congress Steelers did. Congress passed. Like a, <laughs> Wow. Congress Congress passed a law a few years ago where they had to normalize or average out the judges so that the they weren't so all over the place. But anyway, it's the same with photography judging. If you judge it in the morning, you might have a completely different perception of the image versus judging it in the afternoon. So it's a very tricky thing. And that's why we do multiple rounds of judging so that images can like get a fresh look and People can see it for a second, third, fourth time and be like, you know, like I didn't really like it the first time around, but now it's starting to catch on and I understand why people like it and you can talk through those things. So I think our process is a little bit better in that way. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more work, but <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's so terrible. Ooh, I love what do you mean one. terrible? This is in your latest releases, dude. This is like 
Dude, this is sick. The best you got because this is your <laughs> freshest work. Like, um, this, this fall, yeah. Last did fall. you put this I in like... yourself, Matt? <laughs> no. Hey, come on, nice come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, that's hey, awesome. like... hey, Jennifer, you got to read the playbook. <laughs> Sorry, I'm you can't. Out you can't throw your own shit on the screen. I just put in the P image. At the I was beginning. gonna give him props for having the confidence. Like, that's like awesome. this dude's got some bulls. <laughs> 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 and number 11 and 12 are mine so step back bitches <laughs> so i wanted to uh feature something from colorado since you've been living there for a while so it's a place where you create personal work like most of us you know close to home literally and i really like this one because the composition is like really well balanced like the grouping of the trees the nice spacing but then i like how the trees are bare and then the color that you would see in the fall is provided by like the ground foliage instead of the trees so that's a pretty cool pretty creative little thing you did well thank you yeah that was super, super this, nice yeah that was this last fall i was um it was like raining all day and i was like i'm just gonna hike up this hillside and see what i can find and i ran into this cluster of trees and i was like oh those are dope <laughs> dude it's killer this is a yeah. sweet shot they're so nicely organized yeah absolutely this would be a killer print yeah i'd give it like three and a half stars yeah, yeah three out of three three point six I, that's where i had it at but you're close yeah. right <laughs> depends on the time of day depends on the uh, level of contrast added in the cloning but uh yeah we're there yeah so before we, before this episode goes live we're gonna need you to raw verify all of these images <laughs> that we selected <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh sure shit, dude! Before we post this, dude. Oh, let me get just get on right on that. <laughs> so, I'm gonna ask you this for every single one of them. Would this qualify for the Natural Landscape Photography Awards? Oh yeah, it's super straight. I mean, Until. it's like just some tone curve work. That's about it. No cloning. No. No, no, no warping. Cloning, no warping. No. Messy, beautiful. I mean, it's not even like a stack. It's just a straight shot. Cause I was like, it was pretty far away. So I was like, maybe. Well, and this is like a hillside, right? So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Got a nice, even, not, not a lot of depth. I don't even think I, I didn't even crop it. It's just pretty straight. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Thank you. I like it because it has the, the kind of the burnt yellows and browns. It's not that pure yellow. People want that pure, vibrant yellow. The piss yellow. So well, because it's, I mean, to me, because of that kind of like more rust colored palette, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, it's mm -hmm. past peak too. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah, freaks sure. out about peak fall color. Yeah. There's no such thing as peak fall color. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like start shooting till after peak, I would say. Yeah. These bare trees are one of my favorite subjects. Like, I mean, wait. I will say like for sure. I will say grand, grand landscapes. You kind of want that, like peak. So you don't have like a lot of open gaps and stuff, and yeah, but otherwise, more uniformity. For what I'm usually shooting, I, I prefer like past peak. Stupid little small scenes. Yeah, the terrible small scenes. Mm -hmm. nah, this one's cool. This one stood out to me in your uh, Colorado fall foliage portfolio thank you you got a lot of shit on your website now i know i need to go through and get rid of some stuff still it's you got it's some old to... stuff on there like 2010 i saw i know that's yeah the Oregon stuff i gotta get rid of some old stuff i just don't have time oh shit dude yeah. this is dope Here as is. fuck hey, is there a cameo happening right now is there a cameo oh, yeah. oh, what look he's beer here. delivery beer. dude beer there delivery. he is there he is. What do you think about this photo, David? Well, it's pretty fucking awesome. How many stars out of five stars? How many stars? How many stars would you give us? Uh, how many can we give? Five. <laughs> give this guy a give this guy a nickel. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. As cool. long as it passes raw verification, right, David? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's real. Probably not. <laughs> Super warped. It was just a straight line, and he's like, nee. <laughs> <laughs> and he was chiseling that shit. <laughs> oh yeah, he did it in he's real like life this. so that it would qualify, but it destroyed the spot for everybody else. <laughs> it was good. 
Thank you. You're welcome. See, look at this service. What did he bring oh. you? Hey, he good to see you, David. One that I've been drinking. Oh shit! Two in a row. Two in a row. Mm, David. Game over. But we're running low. That's why I'm sad, and that's why I'm like, that's why I'm looking hey. at publishing cases. Hey, Paul will hook great, you up. Great okay. notion. <laughs> I'll IM, I'll IM you. We'll get something going on that for oh, both you. Thanks, both Paul. You too. Yeah, next weekend I'll, I'll get you guys a package going. And I'll, I'll tell Jimmy he has to ship you some Mortalis stuff for missing your episode. So he's got to make oh, up so for it somehow. The Aww. Mortalis stuff is the real deal. That'll be a good start to make up for it. I know. I'm sad You'll I missed him online last week. I like. You'll Jim. consider forgiving him. So pain. Yeah. Dude, when I saw this one. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm not even gonna tell you. I so went I and smoked. A, a, I went and smoked a cigarette after I looked at it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta give. I gotta give props to my my buddy Kane Engelbert because I had usually like when we before we release any images, we'll like send each other the link and like, hey, what do you think? And he was like, dude, this one would be dope if you cropped it. So I did, and so this crop is his crop. I mean, it wasn't it was just a, it was just a slight crop, but it made all the difference. Oh, yeah. Cool. So. This is spectacular. I remember when this showed up on my feed or Facebook or wherever I saw it first, and I was just like, holy crap. Like, yep. yep. And that was a handheld with a 200 to 600 off of a boat. Nice. Damn, mad skills, Matt. That's sick. It's, it's like one of those deals where you get, you probably looked at it for a long time. And when you get a second set of eyes on it, just to like give you some more feedback on, I, I get exactly what you're saying. And that the way the light just kind of trails from big to small down in that curve on the bottom. Yeah. You freaking slayed it, dude. And I love ice. I mean, if I could shoot any, I mean, that's my favorite thing to shoot is it just, is. I, I love fucking ice. Ice is just the best because there's, you can just get so creative with it. Yeah. And, uh, have you printed this? I have not yet. Oh, fuck you, fuck you, dude. dude. This would be nice on like that Fuji Flex. With yes, a little bit of shimmer. Oh, yeah, yeah. dude, it would look so sick. I mean, this on a big fucking print would be so badass. Mm. I mean, it's just got you can put it Fuji Flex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. It's it's really nice. I and mean, you can and, see uh, there's like little flecks of of black dirt and stuff in there too which is kind of cool yeah oh yeah, yeah. That's oh. oh it's that's it's dirt. dude it's so nice and it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's so nice eric just threw up in his mouth a little bit. <laughs> 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 hey kane, kane's the man too i'm surprised this is the first time you brought kane up in this episode i know i know he's you're no, always blabbing did, about someone did earlier i did oh yeah well yeah, usually Matt always talks about him in his podcast. Oh, that's true. My buddy Kane. Kane deserves some love. Yeah, there's Absolutely. a. We're gonna, we want to have him on at some point. I can't remember. On. I can't remember who said this, but I always laugh every time they say, "No Kane, no pain." <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> no, no pain, no that's pain. Awesome. I can't remember. Pain, no Kane. I love that. We do. We do most of our trips together for sure. If we can. It sounds like Kane Bl in a while. It sounds like Bolino and I. I know. You're my boy. You're my boy, Blue. You're we my get boy. One of the books, though, on the calendar. <laughs> hey, come on, can't deny it. A backpacking trip this summer. You know it, dude. Every summer, baby. Every come on. summer. I don't know if Matt uh, and Kane touch each other though. Not like, not like they do. We don't like get the yeah. belt out or anything <laughs> like that. Blino and I don't. Blino <laughs> and I don't fuck around. Yeah, we we pair down weight. We have a double sleeping bag for two people. Like it's for sure. real. We're, we're legit. <laughs> Double sleeping pad, but single sleeping pad. One man tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a one. It's a one no two man out. tent. It's yeah. a one two man tent. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah, it's yeah. Bolino's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. And Bolino oh, yeah, isn't really. my mic. I cramp up a lot, so he's cool. Yeah, I, I'm used to it. Paul <laughs> cuts through, man. Paul will cramp up and still pound out another seven miles. I'm like, Jesus, dude, like 2,000 feet. I'm like, dude, I would be done. I've been pitching a ton on the side of the trail right there, and he just cranks it out <laughs> with, like, bad leg cramps. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, you need, to, you need to stop. <laughs> How do you not <laughs> walk right into that one? Like... I was pitching a tent on the fucking trail, <laughs> <laughs> and, he's cr and he's cramping up, but he's a savage. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good, dirty mind, Jennifer. Dirty mind. Let me tell you, Jennifer. That's why she's here. <laughs> hey, she just she's she just made her like she just Permanent. staked a freaking claim into like <laughs> number, she's number five. She's a, she's in the game. <laughs> oh, you know, got bummed. <laughs> Yeah, she's dro- she's dropping dime beers and uh, like a boom. Pen. Oh shit, right. dude, this is money. That's I think Colorado this one because too. I feel like this is such a Matt Payne image. Yeah, is that the one behind you, Payne? Yeah, it's a slightly different edit though. Uh, Fuck yeah, Alex but just Nail like helped me re-edit it. I'm not sure which one I like more, but anyway. this one is re-edited from the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it was it's, totally. So good. It's, it's slightly gonna... wider. It's slightly wider. You wouldn't edit this one differently if you did it from scratch today? It's a really hard file. Well, it's actually a pano, but it's it's just hard to edit. I mean, it's a, it's old. It's a Nikon D800. I mean, they're good files, but it's, it's just hard to edit. With that light, right? Oh, the light was insane. insane. Well, the reason it's hard is because the sky is like so bright and there's no light hitting exactly. mountains. Yeah. But there was. Oh, so, like they just have to be dark, but you don't want them to be dark because exactly you can see the mountains. My very first edit of this photo, they were it was a lot darker, and I just I didn't like it as much. Mm-hmm. So Alex Nail told you to open it up more. No, he just he was more. He thought my colors were off. Mm. So you can see him this edit. There's like a lot more reds and cyan's, and this one has more. It's almost more of like an orangey feel to it. I definitely like this edit better. I think yeah, the colors here are fine. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah you guys haven't heard it yet, but he basically told me one of the photos in my new book is dog shit. So yeah, who did? Which one? <laughs> Pain? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. He had me on to talk about my book. And then he was like, what's up with this photo, dude? Like, this doesn't need to be in here. Okay. He asked me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh Here shit. We Here, we Here we go. Here we go. Yes. He yes. Asked me Pop in the mouthpiece. It's, it's go was, time. If there was any of the photos that I didn't like, I'm not going to be like, no, man, they're all fucking. Yeah, that, you're not supposed to say yes. <laughs> I'm just honest, man. Just, just how it is. Man. One photo out of like 150. Come on, dude. Where was this? Uh, this is on top of 13,900 foot turret peak. Okay. Is this the pa- Sangre de Cristos? Uh, San Juan. Mm. Oh, okay. Dude, how stoked were you when this bitch lit up? No. Weird. Unreal. Were you and just like... A, it's a pretty deep backpack in there. So you have to you have to take a train. You get dropped off halfway. And then you backpack up this steep, steep, steep trail for like eight miles. Then you camp at the base of Pigeon Peak. And I got up at, I didn't go to bed, but I started hiking at like 10 p.m. And then I photographed the Perseid meteor shower from the saddle of Turret and Pigeon. Oh, wow. And then um, at like three in the morning, I hiked up and got to the top of Turret at about 4.30. And then this is the fucking craziest sunrise I've ever seen in my life. We got the mountain in the back right where the sun is. That's Jagged Mountain, which is one of the hardest mountains in Colorado to climb. Hmm. Um, and then the one to the right of it is Rio Grande Pyramid. I've done almost all of these peaks. Yes. And that's one reason why I picked this, Matt, is just because like you've done the top 300 highest mountains in Colorado. And I know that you were doing... A lot of like hiking to the top for sunrise, which not many people do. And just how like this is so emblematic of Colorado. And you got the, the amazing sunrise and the effort you put into it. And just how mountains have been a story of your 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 life and your photography life as well. Like just the view. I think the arrangement's really nice. Just looking at the vert- verticality of these peaks and knowing not how that's a good connection. Story behind like, it. It's killer. Yeah. This is a killer image. Yeah. Um, so there's, are there a hundred 14ers? Is that how many? 53. 53. 53. So you did the 53 14ers and then you went and did the 300 tallest mountains or hundred. I've done the highest hundred. Um, and then I've probably done 300 total peaks. Okay. Wow. That's, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Good for you. That's awesome, dude. 
yeah like mm-hmm. i can kind of imagine mm-hmm. being on top <clears throat> and looking at this event but like just just taking in this amazing vista just must have been incredible at some oh, taking it by yourself too right yeah i was by myself yeah yeah that's a that's little the best sketchy of a climb in the dark <laughs> oh i can imagine no way yeah but it's i mean i have never seen a sunrise like that since that's so cool that was 2016. oh wow yeah pretty crazy it, it looks like one of those ones where it's almost too dramatic right you know where you're like okay i gotta tone this light down a little bit because it's just i had one of those ones up at mount hood up at uh, tom dick and harry and it was just like so red and so crazy you're just like i can't do anything with it i know well you're it even like clips to your eyes yeah your eyes can't even expose the red channel yeah it's just you're just going it's it's almost like it's so much more enjoyable to the eye, but then you definitely want to capture it on camera as well and just go, fuck, this is amazing. Yeah, I was, um, I shot that with a 24 to 70 at like 40 mil and I did a vertical pano. Mm-hmm. It was vertical, okay, yeah. Yeah. I love that peak in the very back. Yeah. I just, uh, I mean, the one in the back and then the one right towards the left of that peak where it just kind of it's got that nice ridge to it and it just kind of pulls you through the scene it's yeah. dope as fuck a yeah. beam of light yeah, yeah. that's it was crazy to see that i mean i was just like what am i seeing this is nuts you, dude you'll never forget it i mean it's just like never. one of those it's just like one of those things that's like ingrained in your head you're just going that's also the cover of my book <laughs> yeah that's cool a uh, guidebook that you yeah. worked on yeah yeah that's how many sick. people have an image like this from southwest colorado not many uh, i would say you and jack brower me and maybe? jack brower yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah jack stuff is fantastic too yeah, like he's great yep huge inspiration yeah jack's 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 fucking jack yep this is oh cool. yeah I yeah, just this saw this is actually insane. If Eric complains about this one, like we should, you know. There's going to be a mutiny. No, this one, I, I have no idea what it is. Oh, I do. Like, I, Matt, I love this image. This is obviously my pick. Of course, I'm going to pick something like this. When you first came out with this image, I was like, holy crap. I mean, I don't need, do you remember what geyser basin you were in? I have an idea. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Norris. That's what From I was Yellowstone. Yep. Mm-hmm. But but when I see this one, I really cannot decide if this is a small scene or an aerial or which would be illegal. But um yes. <laughs> 70 to 70 to 200 F four macro handheld. I guess the little pebbles mm-hmm. kind of give a clue. Yeah. yeah. This is but really outstanding. Like Thank you. it kind of has like head. Like the vague detail of like an aerial, like you're far away or something, you know, like, like the details there, but it's soft, like painterly. Yeah. Like, this is incredible. Yeah. When I saw it in person, I was like, what the hell is that? I mean, Can I asked where in Norris this was. Um, so you know how Jennifer's about to comp stomp this. When you get to the top of that hill. <laughs> this changes like every season. So there's no way. You know, when you get to the top of the hill and you can go left or right. Yep. So if you go left and then you get to that bridge. Yep, the bridge. Because that's right where that green comes in. Yeah, it's right at that bridge. Okay, nice. Hey, this shit's getting ready to go international. Yeah, Millions of people so watching cool. this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Millions. Gotta watch, your, gotta watch Millions. your language. But that's the beautiful thing about Yellowstone is that, I mean, you could walk to this spot four weeks later and it's completely different. Like... Yeah, it changes yeah. so much, especially Norris. It's the most dynamic basin, I think, out of all the basins in the park. I will never forget this day because um, probably five minutes after I photographed this scene, um, on the other side of the other path walkway, mm-hmm. this herd of bison come walking up and through the mist towards us. I was like, nice. what? Yeah. And of course, we have our, all of our clients with us, and we're just like, let's do this. They yeah. Were, 
Stoked, yeah. Norris is my favorite basin in the park. I always tell David, I'm like, if I die, like you can totally cremate me and just spread me there. It's not well, like- Well, it was funny because we almost didn't go there because we were, I think this was like on our last full day in the snow coaches. Oh, okay. And we were, you know, of course we were looking for foxes and yeah. wolves and all that, but we were just getting skunked and we were like, oh, let's go to Norris. Let's check that out. So yeah. it was just kind of like- serendipity i didn't have any idea this was there it was just like you know like back to what we talked about before react and respond to what you what you're provided mm -hmm. yeah but no this is beautiful just your composition just that little splash of green and the pebbles in the middle like yeah this is probably one of my favorite images of yours thank you well it's like how like all the orange like fingers are coming in on the edges but it's not perfectly symmetrical like it has enough like offness to feel organic but it, but still like, it's all like, you know, it's being surrounded by those things. And it, what, what is the white stuff? Is that yeah, like spider like, webs or bacteria? bacteria? Yeah. They're just bacteria. Mm. It's called a mm. thermophilic community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ther oh. I could really bore you guys now as the geologist here. Um, so thermophilic just means heat loving bacteria. And every color that you see is a different type of bacteria that thrives at a different temperature, hot temperature. So, yeah. It's just, it's fascinating what comes Yeah, I out. know, um, Eric, you, you've turned me on to Jim Basia and he saw this photo and he reached out to me and he sent me a book all about the science of Yellowstone. <laughs> so he's a cool dude. Yeah, Jim's awesome. He sends me a lot of books. Yeah. Wow. Love that guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, his work is always so nice too. But yeah, yep. love this image. Thank you. Yeah, I was really happy with this one um i still have like tons of edits from yellowstone i need to do but this one i had to get done i was like that scene was ridiculous yeah there's one where i was scrolling and then i was like what and then i was like yeah. wait matt shot this seriously <laughs> yeah it's dope can't, dude that can't it's be dope. Right. <laughs> there's, there's so much goodness here i thought instagram was like malfunctioning that day like glitching <laughs> glitching who, <the> did he, <laughs> who did he steal this from <laughs> I have faith in you, Matt. Nah, it's I dope. <laughs> it is dope. Thank you. And I've I've loved seeing your progression and I don't know, I guess like personal journey since I first I found out about you because of your podcast. Like your podcast came out and I was like, who's this Matt Payne guy? I'd I'd never heard of you before that. So then uh it's been cool to see your work evolve and improve and Yeah, that's the fun part of the journey is like getting incrementally better over time. That's the goal. Do you feel like a lot of that is due to the podcast or do you think it would have happened regardless? Oh, I mean, it's hard to know, like for sure, but I know that the podcast has definitely had a huge influence and in, like meeting all the people I've met and talking to them and learning about their approach to making images, their philosophy, you know, all of that stuff has rubbed off on me. I try to borrow bits and pieces that make sense to me and incorporate that into the way I try to photograph so for sure yeah i've definitely you, rubbed off on you a few times yeah dude really? your work your work has gotten so really? much better he even took I mean, my belt <laughs> <laughs> and you're yeah. in the rooftop tent yeah i was like sleeping and <laughs> it's fucked up eric <laughs> 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 yes. yes well thank you for your Kind words. Appreciate that. So I wanted to throw in one extra one because uh, there's another Colorado this, mountain image, which this is, is big, dope, dude. Big yeah. theme in, in Matt's life, not just in photography. Um, and this is such a crazy image. Like this one is really nice. I'm not going to talk shit on this one at all because I think it's it's great. And uh, <laughs> just the ethereal conditions. Um, when I saw this one, I was, I was really blown away because I was like, oh, this is totally different from most of the stuff that I see you shoot and also just anybody in the San Juans. Well, this is actually the West Elks. Um, mm -hmm. Crested Butte. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah, Pass. yeah, that's right, actually. Um, and I've, I've photographed this scene probably, I don't know, six or seven times over the years. In fact, my very, very, very first time doing fall color trip on my own in 2012, I went here first um, and photographed this scene. Not this perspective of it but this scene it's a pretty popular location in fall but um you know this with this scene i was using a telephoto lens 
And I've never seen conditions like this there, and I will never see conditions like that ever again, probably. Well, that's what I was imagining, that there'd be some kind of a story because it's like a, oh, shit moment. Like, well, this we is got crazy. The fog. the fog. We got up in the morning. Yeah, the fog like, is dope, dude. We're like, dude, there's fog. What are we doing? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We were just, me and Kane were like, where are we going to go? And we're like, we got to go to Kebler. Let's go to Kebler. And we're driving over to up towards Kebler and like, oh my God, there's, look at the castles. And so then we flipped around and got out, ran down the hill and like got this and um, the fog was kind of weaving in and out of the scene and whew, it was awesome. I mean, both of me and Kane were like, we ain't got to shoot Ohio Pass ever again because <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to be like that ever again. You know, yeah, with I'm the sure snow you went straight too. down the mountain to the first convenience store. I got a pack of Mambros. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro broke the filters off freaking <laughs> smoked those bitches uh, we just went back dude to our, we just it's went that back stress to our, it's that stress our, of just like man this is dope we just went back to our yeah. campsite and hugged it out you know it's mm, fishy yeah <laughs> no like and i don't know the snow too like you don't get snow there very often easy either i feel like Every time I changes there, everything, dude. Yeah, having yeah, the snow in the fall, like with the fall, and this is like early fall too, so that's even. Yeah, it was just so some green. You can't, and then you got the dark clouds kind of anchoring the top scene. Yeah, yeah, the layering. Yeah, just you knew what you were doing. It's almost like a frame. Yeah, yeah it's super, dude, it's super sick. This is so really... that's one would qualify for NLPA. Yeah, you mean like rule yeah. wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a would you would you say you indirectly follow the rules in all your images? Uh, not all my images. Interesting. But probably ninety percent. Yeah. I would say like I. This is gonna be interesting, but like, if I have black and white images, I tend to kind of push the boundaries a little bit more sometimes. Darken stuff more than yeah, burn, realistic. Burn stuff. Um, or even like distort objects, like, I don't know, black and white's like a total abstraction. And sometimes I'm like, Hey, let's see what I can do. Yeah. Not very often, but sometimes certain scenes just kind of beg for a little. Sure. Artistic liberties. We'll still need all the raw files for these before they, this goes live. Just to no make problem. sure. Yeah. I want to keep it we, need to, dude. we need to review them. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you, Eric. We need to heavy scrutiny, deep dive. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you be able to oh, like yeah. uh make sure I do delicious. have that voice in the back of my head when I edit though, like, oh, is this would this pass NLPA? <laughs> I do I it is in my mind sometimes, yeah. Well I imagine we appreciate, we appreciate that. Gotta practice what you preach, right? Exactly. That's right. Matt, is this the last one? No. Oh shit. Dude. Those are my killer, only photos. So. Dude, killer killer selection of your images that you brought to us today and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and and great images that we all selected. I mean, it's yeah, great guest. Appreciate it. Even Thanks. though you broke the sacred rules of our show, we'll let it slide. Yeah, uh, kind of weird on 420, but uh, we'll... Mm -hmm. Jennifer, call him out later, okay? Tell him what's up. I was actually considering... You know, but I decided to keep it, keep it straight. Oh, good call. That's good for you. I even no worked peer, out. No peer, no peer pressure. I worked out before the show. Me too. Awesome. Good man. Yeah. Are, sure are, you mix, are you mixing in uh, any sauna activities? Uh, no, I don't have one. That would be awesome. If yeah, I, I don't have one either. Do a yeah, little cold, a little cold bathing too. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah I know. So good. For any of you that are... For anybody that's uh, want to get that fitness journey, cold plunge and and uh, sauna is the shit. Yeah, yeah they've done studies. Well. I mean, I'm a big, not on every episode, but I do appreciate Huberman Lab. You can learn a lot of really mm -hmm. cool stuff, and I've learned a lot through that podcast. Yeah. And that's actually the first time I heard that alcohol podcast. I was like, oh my god, I'm killing myself. Never right drinking now. again. Yeah, it's like poison. Yep. Yep. And so it's like I'm. When I first heard that episode, I was drinking easily like these big beers you guys are doing. I was doing at least three of those a day, every day. Damn. Wow. Every day. That's just sad. I do everything <laughs> the opposite to offset that. 
you know, the cardio, the sauna, the cold yeah. plunge. I think if you're aware the that it's not I do all good that for stuff. you, yeah, there's th there's things you can do to try to offset it at least. But I, yeah. I cut way back after I heard that podcast. Like I was considering like quitting, but I was like, okay, maybe I don't need to quit. But, you know, I was already justifying it a couple hours later because – I think if you do, I, I mean, everything is, everything's in moderation. You know, right. it's like one of those deals. If you eat right, you get right. the sleep that you need. Um, yeah. You get the exercise. Um, for but me, even it's uh, sauna. moderation and moderation too. For sure. For sure. It's, it's all, it's all just like controllables. I just know my personality. Like in order for me to change my behavior, I have to set a goal. Yeah. So that's why I set up like this crazy aud audacious goal of being completely alcohol free for a year mm -hmm. and i thought my friend shane said something to me because i was telling him like how much i admired his how he was doing everything and he was like have you ever thought about just trying to do it for a year and i was like no but that is intriguing so i'm on the journey we'll see how i feel at the end of the year right so for me like i i like to prove things to myself too so yeah exactly I That's like to do it. things just to prove to myself that I can, or like just to see if I can. Like yep. I like to test myself on a exactly. lot of different yeah. yep. things. Yep. My wife's always like, why are you so strict? Like, why are you so disciplined? Like, why don't you relax? I'm like, I don't know. It's just, I enjoy seeing what I'm capable of. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good point. I mean, you, you're, I treat my body like a laboratory. I mean, I'll fast. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm serious. Just dump I'll fast. everything into it. See what comes no. out. I'll fast for three days um once a quarter i'll go a month and eat just like meat i'll go a month and eat just eat like a vegan diet and i'm a little bit older than most folks on this cast here i'm 55 so i've gotten to this point where it's it's cool to test different theories and see how the performance lines up with what you need what works to, for you. Uh, yeah because everyone's body and and the makeup and the chemistry is different and so i just I, th I wish I would have learned this 20 years ago, you know, just trying to figure out different things to do to see what the optimal performance is going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's more research I, coming out too about this. Like you talk right. about Huberman and like, there's just more and more knowledge that's kind of being gathered as people start studying these, the effects of certain things on your body, like cold plunges are incredible. Like, we have a cold plunge set up and it's, I can't believe how much I love it. Like it's. That's it's, fucking it's, dope, like, dude. I get home from work. I'm exhausted. I have a headache. I'm just fried and I'll do a sauna cold plunge and I'm wide awake. I'm like, I just like, I just woke up. Like, yeah, the science really behind sad. that's really interesting because it basically yeah, like releases fat, dopamine. Dopamine, 2.5. Yeah. All yeah. that stuff. Like it's crazy. Yeah. It's it's so good. And it's everyone's dope. body, everyone's body's different. Like, like. It doesn't, I mean, you gotta find out what works for you. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all a little bit different based on where we came from and your body's going to operate and function a little bit different on based yeah. on the experiment. It's so, well, super like not, cool. not everybody is going to feel good on a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet. Exactly. Yep. Well, and Bowman, you, you brought up a good point. Cause you said you're 55 and you know, I'm 45 and I feel like once you get into your mid forties, you know, you start having friends who are their health is declining maybe they're a little older than you and you're like god oh, dang like yeah and so like you just start seeing more of that or in your circle of friends and yep and it just has more of an impact on like your mentality about how you treat yourself and so anyway yeah. i want to be able uh, to do the stuff i do like well into my 60s and 70s ideally so yeah I mean, I just did the no. Colorado Trail this last summer. Like, I would love to be able to do that again someday, like something like that. And then, so, you know. No. Yep. You, you brought it up earlier. It's like you look around at different people at your age bracket and you're like going, okay, I don't want to fucking look like that. Yeah. I don't want to feel like that. And yeah, so yeah. it's just, it's just like, evolving and doing different things and testing your body to make sure that you're doing things to prevent that from happening and i i love i that's the favorite that's my favorite part of my life right now is just doing different things and experimenting on what works for me 
to make me feel good. And I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you know, the 40s is like a wake up call. Like Matt just kind of said, you kind of look around and you realize like, oh my God, like, yeah, like half my life is almost over. And I want that second half to be as productive and as long as I can make it. So you start Tell me about it. reframing your thinking. I'm oh, like ready a to young kick the bucket. I don't even want to hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. I mean, it's, it's so great. Like when Bellino and I go backpacking and he's like a mile or two in front of me, I'm like go fuck yourself but but it's the same thing it's just like i am like my i frame up my life to be able to keep up with Bellino, to be able to keep with my son with who's 30 or whoever else i'm like that's where i'm at i want to be able to like just extend and just be better yeah. and uh you know Shit, just, man, your just, son is your son's 30 now Dude, he's 27. Okay. God. Yeah, yeah he's like, like last time I saw him was like 2018, I think. Yeah, he's like he was like 15 or 16, dude. And he's <laughs> he's like he's like a fireman now. And and like for me, he he likes to do what I like to do. And so if I'm gonna keep up with him and his buddies, I gotta put in the work. Exactly. And that's what that and your son's your son's getting there too and He's and 16. it's one of those yeah. yeah and it's one of those things where you're like you want to be able to keep up with them yeah exactly you know? and or so it's continue to whip his ass yeah right. so you Bellino, and uh bennett's bennett's in the rears a little bit but uh well all, it's one of the, uh no me matt and michael all our oldest is all the same age 15 16. yeah mine, mine yeah. will be 16 in october well, yeah, so you guys get it. I mean, it's just yeah, we're all doing driving lessons and that stuff right now. I just my son had one today. <laughs> yeah, ah, it's so crazy. It is. It's just it's so crazy to be like part of that life and just you know you want you just want to be the best version of yourself. Yep. Yep. I think yeah. 45 is a great age to do it, Matt, because I feel like 45 for me was where like these little aches and pains, these nagging injuries, just took forever to heal so i think if you can you're like you're working out you're stretching all that different stuff i think it's going to really be preventative for exactly kind of more age related kind of nagging injuries to take place like i got hip issue for like two years like it was yeah insane. yep for me it was like with skateboarding like i'd get hurt skateboarding and it'd take way longer to heal with like hiking and stuff i've never had issues up yeah. to this point but uh skateboarding is the main thing i've had to slow down on like since i turned 25 i'd say i started to really notice a difference yeah. What are you now, Eric? Are you 30 yet? 32, 35? <laughs> what are you? 18. I think I'm 33. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, I totally. Yeah, you're right on there, Michael. Like stretching, if I could go back to my younger self and tell myself to do like one thing every day, it would so be stretching. And so mine, would be, uh, mine would be core. Mine would be core exercise. Yeah, mm -hmm. core and Yeah, for sure core strength like it affects, i mean diet it affects i think everything. diets diet's the most important thing that's like, doesn't matter what you're doing in the gym stuff. like if you're eating like well shit. now they're now yeah. they're saying like sleep is more important than diet true yeah. i mean sleep is a huge part of your body's performance so even if you're eating really well you're not your metabolism and immune system and everything is going to be and that's what i not sleeping well that's what i started noticing about drinking and i recommend nine and a half hours now mm hmm yeah, like your brain, hours, your brain needs day. that sleep. That's what I noticed about myself when I would drink is like I would, I could fall asleep much easier, but the quality You wake up in the middle of the night yeah, for a couple hours, is, can't go back to sleep. Is bad. Yeah, yeah. You they don't get good that, REM sleep. I guess, you, yeah, you don't get good REM sleep, exactly. So, Which is the brain. Yeah. Because yep. like your the sleep, they're finding out, especially with like Alzheimer's and dementia, like whatever those plaques are that form in your brain at night when you get good sleep, that's when your brain kind of removes those. Wow. So it's critical to get that. This, changing my sleep habits has probably been one of the things this year I've been really focused on. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like way more productive now too. Like mm -hmm. get a lot more done during the day. Yeah. That's when, like, when I was sick, I didn't drink at all, obviously. And, and I, like, those later hours of the day between, like, 6 to 9 or 7 to 9, like, I was doing things like reading or because if I had a beer or two, I didn't want to read because I want to retain. And mm -hmm. I just kind of opened up those hours to be more productive. Right. So that was, was kind of a nice side benefit. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Amazing. Well, Bellino's or uh, Bob Bowman's puking out some beer. So he here's to another one. He's gonna figure it here's out. Here's to feeling it. good all the time, right, boys? <laughs> Girl, right. more beer. Hey, hey, <laughs> you shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I, I just want. I just went down to the sauna. Figure it out. Get it quick. Just turn, turn it, it on. Quickie. Yeah. Seven hundred mm-hmm. degrees. Ten five minutes. I like it. I, I used to like it like. 160 165 for like 20 30 minutes but now i've heard I it's like better it. to do it hotter and shorter time yep i like it 195 200 for 10 minutes laird hamilton does like 270 for like 15 minutes or something like that dude it's it's 200 is perfect it's like 10 minutes of just soul lift searching weights in there too and then and then five minutes of stretching yeah Hmm. Yeah. I fucking love it. Oh no, I was just gonna say, Michael, I'm super interested in your clo- your cold plunge setup because I really want to get into that. Well, it's uh, it's it's not really perfect. It's basically just like a big trough, like a like a black plastic trough, where it's like a tub. Picture like a tub, like a big clawfoot tub, but like a trough. I have and... like horse tubs for water, so that's kind of what I'm envisioning. Yeah, that's you great. Need ice every time. Livestock. <laughs> Why don't ice every time? Because I think the research says below 50 is all you need. So, like in the winter time. Well, you got to stay in longer. So no, it just depends. The temperature decides like how long determines how long you got to stay in there to get. I just heard below 50, below in the 50s or below for 11 minutes a week. So mm-hmm. we do three, two sessions of three, three days a week, which is what, you know, 12, or whatever. Yeah. Interesting. I had a riding injury in the fall and someone brought up like how it just takes, it seems like, I think it was you, Michael, that it just takes longer to heal in your forties. And yeah, I had a pretty bad riding injury. My horse fell on me essentially in the fall and I did hot and I did cold to heal my ankle. Like, you know, I would do that Mm -hmm. through a cycle and that was super productive. And I feel like that actually helped me heal faster. So I've been researching. Stimulates uh, white blood cell reproduction. Yeah. Which is yeah, a big part of healing. Yeah. So, this yeah. is just a trop. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. It's not like a, I mean, because ice, we like in the summer we would buy bags of ice, but they add up. Oh you know? yeah. So like, it's not exactly what you maybe would need. Like this summer will be kind of interesting in terms of how cold it's going to get. But um, in the winter time it's been great. Like, yeah. And you're cold, like you're shivering, your, 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 your hands are in pain, your feet are in pain. Like, it's cold enough. Like you definitely have a very much, a very much a cold response to get these cold spike proteins. I, and- I almost think it's harder though when it's like hot out and you go in the cold water because the contrast is so broad than when it's cold out and you go in the cold water because it's not that much that different. You know, you're already kind of like, like acclimated it. to the cold. Yeah. So I, just like a, I need to do like- the sauna first. I can't go straight into the cold first. My wife will do that once in a while, but I need to have I need to be hot mm. and just jump in like as fast. But if as you if you do like. Yeah, if you do hot and then cold, that's better than cold then hot because then your body has to reheat and yeah. instead of letting the sauna reheat your body. So you get more benefits that way. But one thing is like if you lift weights at all, you shouldn't do a cold plunge um right after your workout. You should wait at least two that, hours. You want that flooding of um the blood you don't want to lower your blood muscles. pressure. You want your blood pressure to be higher. So you release more growth hormone, which, you know, makes you grow more muscle. Cause if you, if you go into cold water, you counteract that. And so you're not going to grow as much muscle because you're going to be doing the reverse. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 You want your body temperature to be up. Matt, I had a question cause I'm looking at the books in your background right now. How come you guys changed the dimensions and size of the natural landscape books on, on volume two? Yeah. And we changed it on volume three two but it's different again it's the same size as two but the paper is a little bit different um mostly just for shipping purposes it's uh especially from the uk because i'm thinking like if you want if you're doing like a series you know volume one two three four five six seven eight nine ten like you want them to fit next to each other yeah i mean we learned lessons i mean volume one was for whatever reason, like it puts your the weight limit over a certain threshold, which makes it way more expensive to ship internationally. Um, so by reducing the weight just a little bit. What does it, it weigh on volume two now? I don't remember the exact numbers. That's a Tim question. Like I'm talking to the wrong guy here. 
Volume three is lighter than two, though. So it's, it's the even, lightest one. Yeah, but it's, it's fewer it's images got, or thinner paper. Just slightly thinner paper. No, I mean it, you won't notice wow. the difference. I don't think. Budget book. Cutting corners, yeah. huh? Trying to pocket more money. You can't like see through it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Racing paper. paper. But it lowers, like on volume three, it lowered the weight below a certain threshold that makes it way, 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 way more affordable to ship. Okay. In the UK mostly. Like here it's mm. kind of a wash, but they have different postal rules there. Yeah. I would say half of our orders are from UK. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. You'd think it'd be the other way around, but it's it's not. Well. Mm. More people from the UK that enter proportionately by the wow. book. Wow. Yeah, I think there's more of a culture for books there for some reason. Cool, man. Well, what do you have coming up? What's next for you? <laughs> I'm going to the Smokies on Tuesday for Jealous. six days, and then I'll be home for like four days, and then I'll be in Paris and Southern France for 19 days. Oh, mm. the family! Wow, <clears throat> or is that workshop? That's no, a workshop. Paris Work, uh, workshop. is that street photography? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! Wow. And then you do much street fun. photography? I did a little bit when I was when I lived in Portland. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll be home for like four or five days. And then I go to Big Bend for a week. And then I'll be home for a week or two. And then I go to Svalbard. And then I'll be home for maybe three or four days. And I go to Radio. What's in Svalbard besides and snow and polar bears? Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a wildlife. But we're Focus. on a boat, yeah. Mm. So it icebergs, sounds like icebergs, in the icebergs. I haven't, I haven't been yet. Okay, I don't know much. Mm. I'm just filling in because for some, yeah, a lot of these trips are like the person who was supposed to do all the France stuff. He had to get surgery, so I'm like, I can do it. How many workshops are you doing total this year? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to count? You haven't, you've never thought about that. You've never like sat down and thought like, oh, I wonder how many workshops I'm doing this year. Well, it, 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 cha it changes. That's why I can't answer. Like, um, in 24, I'm doing. This is going to take a long time. I'm doing 11. <laughs> oh, really? It looked like more on your website. It was like endless or, list. I guess. I guess it's 12. I count France as one, but it's technically two. Two back to back. Yeah. Oh, and then I think, anyway, yeah, it's 12, 13. I don't know. It's a lot. So you're going to come out to the, that? Uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's just, I would prefer to do a fewer of them, but like I said, I'm filling in for other people. Stepping stuff, up. So. Yeah. And I figured my first couple of years, I'll just, do as many as I can to get the experience. And so that's kind of where I'm at. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, anything fun. else? Anything else you want to say? Um, enter NLPA, support photography, support real photography. Even if you're not anticipating that you'll win by entering. You hear that? Supporting Polino, Jennifer. Yeah. By the book. <laughs> All right. Too easy. Too easy. All right. Good episode. Thanks Good for coming job, on, Matt. Matt. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Everybody. Cheers. Thanks. Bye, Good David. stuff. David, thanks for jumping in, bro. Of course. <laughs> yeah, thanks Love for it. clearing that up for us. Love it. Hey. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, shit. <laughs>